It is indeed time. You know what? We haven't had our new cast of characters show up here yet. Oh my god, I have to use the... Hold up. This is gonna blow your mind. What's good, Victor? Small chance? Okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm on it, flying. Sorry, I've had a hell of a day so far. That's a little bigger than I thought. Jeez, Luis. What happened to it? Oh. Hold up. Let's see, can I get this to work? If I go like this, right? You can see him. Aha! Is that as a loop, maybe? Maybe something like this, and I'll put it down here. Oops. Oh, jeez, my skeleton is still there. There we go. Beautiful. Ah, what's good, everybody? You're gonna be able to be here, Moose? Well, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, good luck to everybody. This is good stuff. Dimax made this. Lord Dimax. You know what? This is a little too chill, right? Like, we're trying to get into it tonight. Alright, hold up. Let's, t let's turn up the noise a little bit right now. I am the Black Knight. Look, Trent, I gotta pump myself up. I understand de desiring the vibes, but I gotta get into this. That was Knuckles.
What the dog doing? What dog? Am I missing a dog? You got the power. <laughs> you got the might. No way. Get ready for battle. Give me your money. Beat the black knight. <laughs> Damn it, am I a boomer? I've been exposed. It's a TikTok thing? I had TikTok installed on my phone for five seconds because people convinced me to do it. To, like, make vlogs. And then I said I hate this, actually. Oh, there goes Steam. Bye, Steam. Oh, Steam's back. This part of the song slaps. Dude, come on. Y'all ready for some guilty gear? The guiltiest of gears. Sandwich? Also a good answer. How's it going, Rasselade? I feel like every song I put on, it's perfectly matched to one of the tempos. Like, this is very a Skeleton Please song, but sometimes it's the Kung Pao Guy song, and sometimes it's the King song. They're all, they're like the whole spectrum. I'm ready for some damn weep cup sunshine. How's it going? Like, watch this. Okay, that that's the court has decided that that is a skeleton please song, right? But if I jump to like this, where is it? I can't find it. If I jump to like this. This song is a very Kung Pao guy song, right? Look at him go. It is. Thank you, Dimax. This is legendary. How did you make them all different tempos? It's amazing. Saying data pod, I don't get it. Yeah, 
Yeah, me too. Shit's crazy. When I go to the other two in the front, I switch between it depending on what song I put on. <laughs> oh man, that would be amazing. Max, I feel like an idiot asking, but what is the spinning tiger? I don't know. A friend? Alright, I like a friend. Why is everyone laughing at me? What'd I do? <laughs> this is the personal Dimax signature. Ooh, my coffee! Give me one second, everyone. Be chill. Alright, I gotta go grab my coffee. I'll be right back. Many tigers? Oh shit. See, and then this is a Kingu song, right? Look at him groove to it. Let's see if we can wrangle Orion Hunter for us, why don't we? Hey, how's it going, Naima? Alright, waiting here for Ryan. Let's pump up the jams just a little bit. You know, I don't want y'all to get too drunk on the jams, but... Jesus. It's so funny how little you have to gain guilty here. How's it going, Sin? Alright, we're just waiting for Lord Ryan to get on in. That is good lore, Dimax. Alright. Boom! It's me. The space next to me is open. It'll be filled in just a second. How's everyone doing tonight? Everyone having a good one? I made myself a big mug of coffee. I'm a little sleepy. But, you know, hoping we can get it done. <clears throat> Excited, as always, to watch some good-ass deal with the gear. I didn't update the bracket yet. Oh, no. Alright, 
me grab this here. Also, just to have the thing up in general. All right. Bracket should be updated. Now we wait. Ryan Hunter has become the GG Plus R logo. I know. Awesome. Whoa. Alright, I made me some hot, hot coffee. I'm ready for some Guilty Gear. As soon as Ryan gets in here, we can probably start getting our competitors in here as well. And we can get going with it. We do have some announcements to make towards the end of this in terms of what we're going to be doing going forward. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, stick around to the end. Make sure you do. The good news is, chat, I was looking over the bracket. Not too many justices this week. I'm just kidding. Finally, we can play real Guilty Gear. Real footsies based guilty gear. It was so funny. I don't know how many of you here, uh, whatchamacallit. I don't know how many of you watched, uh, Leffen's tournament that I was helping commentate for, for Guilty Gear. Literally the first match, right? You have to imagine. There was 1,800 people watching this tournament, right? And a lot of them have never watched Plus R before in their life. First match of top eight. Two, justice mirror right and then we get to the next match one justice just like immediately have to sit there in front of everyone being like no it's sick like ah, i know how it looks <laughs> it's the game sick i swear it's so funny justice mirror is something Then I curse Levo with Justice. She's just popular. Justice has always been popular. Even back... Uh, oh, Ryan, is that you? Hello, hello. Hello, okay. Let's let's do the whole thing we usually do. You want to share your there webcam for me so you're not just a mysterious name on stream? Yeah. Um, let me, before I do that, let me start up Guilty Gear. Sounds like a great idea. Because last time... Shit was crashing my Discord. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, I'll double down. I think Justice has always been super popular. Uh, like, even back... Because uh, I know we talked about this multiple times, but when Plus R launched, a lot of people didn't really stick with it. And it was just... It was weird timing, because when it came out in the States, uh, Exert was coming out, like, super not far after. Uh... But, like, even then, I think the one tournament I did watch, I think it was, like, Frosty Faust things that year. And I was just like, oh, man, I haven't really seen a lot of Plus R. And it was immediately a Justice Mirror. As far as I can tell, she's always been super popular. Do you rebuke that claim, Ryan, or does that sound about right? Uh, I don't know that I would venture an opinion on that personally for me. Because I didn't really follow Plus R that much until, you know, four, five, six months ago. Yeah. So, okay, there we go. Oh. Damn it, I didn't change the stupid auto light shit. Hold on, let me turn my camera forward. You're good. What do you mean you don't, want, you don't want to venture an opinion? That's all we do. We're commentators. Yeah, but I try to be conservative with the things that I state an opinion on, if that makes sense. I'm trying to be wrong on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks as always, Ryan, for hopping in here and playing with us tonight. We're just getting set up here a little bit, folks, and then we should be Gucci and be able to hop into our first one. And as a direct uh, challenge to what I was just saying, I don't know if there's, like, any justices in brackets tonight. There might be a couple, but not too, too many. It's still doing it, but... Oh, no, it's not. Okay. It's, like, really dark, though, right? All right. Ooh. I accidentally jumped away from you. I scared the shit out of somebody who was just hanging out in a voice channel. You're pretty dark, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's really dark, right? Yeah. Um, I can fix that. Hold on. Yeah, I'm turning Ryan down, everybody. I don't know why. It feels like he's bass boosted. Whoa, are you controlling something with your... Whoa. I am. <laughs> That's not enough. Hold on. Hold on. Ryan started playing around with his phone, and his whole room's lighting started to change. This man is on the grid. I think my lights were on the wrong setting, also. 
Hey, how's it going, Spy? You gotta buy Flame Octopus? Hell yeah. Ride that to the bank. How many people do you think have gotten buys in tournaments and then, like, they're talking to their friends after and it's like, How'd you do? And they're like, oh, two, oh, two, and one, that guy's like, heh, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> a non-zero number. Yeah, just doesn't say anything, just, like, tries to fly yeah. under the radar. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's try this one more time. It's still pretty dark. It's a little dark. You're visible. Yeah. Alright, hold on. Last time. Okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the low light garbage that I hate back on. It makes the FPS worse, but it'll be a little better. Low light garbage you hate. Yeah. You're pretty sure last tournament had no dizzy. I no, I think there was a bunch of dizzies last tournament. It feels like we've always had at least one dizzy every tournament. All I know is we had one tournament where there were a bunch of justices. One where there were a bunch of uh, what was it? Cliffs. And yeah, it feels like every tournament there's like, there's there's one character that's like overly represented. I think tonight's a cliff night, Ryan. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, coming back. Did you catch the uh, 25v25, Ryan? I did, I did. Nice. Uh, not the whole thing, because man, that shit was long. But um, there we go. Okay. It, it was long and not entirely due to the matches. The matches were pretty short. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it went down to, like, almost the last game possible, right? And so... also that, yeah. That was, that, that's so cool, isn't it? I feel like, uh, hold on, let me just pop you out here. How does Ryan sound, by the way, everybody? Is he more, uh, normal now? Also, I'm gonna give you my game feed. Nice. Give me that. There you go. Good. Everybody see Ryan? Look at him there. Then we should be able to. <laughs> Whoa, Brian Hunter Whoa. live on stream. <laughs> Red demons in the bracket. There's. Ooh, I had some people poke through. Do we have it on good faith that Red Demon is not a beginner? Um, I've never. Heard I of think so. I'm Red Demon. I know is hangs out in my stream all the time, and I believe they submitted replays to me. So. All right, hold on. We'll figure that out in the background here, but before we do, it does look like we have our first match kind of queuing up here, which is going to be Kensick versus Pandroid, and it's going to be Anji versus Faust. I don't feel like we've seen too many Fausts on stream. Um, Yeah, we had Brian, right? And we've had a few more, but yeah, not, not, not as many as you would probably expect, right? Yeah, and I should probably also uh, uh, make you so you can see it. I was just gonna say that that is uh -huh. cool, usually. Right. Can you see it now? I can. Cool. Nice. Okay. So we have Pandroid on G. First of all, also welcome everybody to our, I believe our fourth beginner plus R tournament. Thank you so much for watching tonight and hanging out. Me and Ryan Hunter here. Here to Ryan's gonna be the analysis here. So in case you're new to this, he's the big scientist who's gonna be going into the lab, showing off a bunch of things. Um, I'm more here to hoot and holler. But Ryan, you got a quick intro for you? Um, yeah, just, uh, been playing Guilty Gear for a million years, uh, you know, played at a high level, commentated, so just trying to, uh, help people out, give, give people some, uh, direction and some feedback on, you know, how to improve. Yeah, uh, give me- Oh, the bomb. So, I like that, uh, is it tennis? I'm gonna say Kensk. Ken Kensk sounds. Yeah, like Kensk. Yeah, I like uh, the the jump 2K usage, like right there to, oh, <laughs> to close out the round. Yeah, super sorry. I was standing on some background things. All right, we're in it. Round two here. Kensk is up one here with Faust. Wow, he managed to get the combo from that high up. <laughs> it's funny there that uh, Kensk jumped after blocking the butterfly because the very first knockdown in round one. Android did uh, like run up on to try to catch a jump back, and uh, Kenneth yeah, was just patient. For sure, for sure. Also, Sage and the Gigantic Great. How's it going, everybody? That's like a thousand people. Dang, you must have rolled up in a big car. We're getting here. Pandroid and Kenneth. Wow, the OTG combos! Very nice, very nice. 
that is uh that is the conversion when you hit the four sword pogo backwards the the pogo backwards is a little bit different than the pogo forwards like the I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> it's like the the physical hit when you when he like hits him with his body. The properties on the backwards one are way 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 better than the forwards one. I like the burst on block. Yeah, really nice just to hold the positioning. Really good awareness. Kenesk uh, playing really well. Yeah, Kenesk is playing super super well. I'm honestly uh, surprised at how much he's kind of holding down the neutral healer. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I may just be looking away every time he does it. I feel like we're not seeing too much item toss, right? Uh, he is a little bit, but I feel like Pandroid is just kind of staying, you know, on top of him, not really giving him too many opportunities, so he's getting him out here and there. He, he's got, he's had a couple of bombs, actually, one that hit Pandroid in, in round one, and then one where he hit himself in round two, so he's definitely getting a couple out here and there, but yeah, not as many as, uh, you know, we've seen in other matchups. For sure. Also, real quick, thank you, Hotashi, for the big sub. Even if you're trying to bribe me, I'm sorry, you'll still ban from the beginner tournament. <laughs> but I appreciate it anyway. Keneska uh, thrown to the corner here early. Android finding the Fujin. Oof. Jump S. God button from Angie. Okay, nice burst. Uh, I mean, I say nice burst because Kenneth didn't have meter, so it was okay to burst there. We've talked about that before. That's actually a, a risky spot to burst against Faust. If he has meter, he can do a burst safe route using the force break, so you want to be careful with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just con uh, okay. converts into the low. Android has so much meter here. I wonder how he's going to try to use it if he can. Okay. Ooh. Could have maybe just Fujin right there after the item toss. Uh, would have most likely been fine. There's not that many um, items that would have punished him for that. Also, he would have Fujin through and ate all those donuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that, and, and that's kind of why that was my first thought, because he knew already there was one food item out, because Kenes did, did a, an item and then did the super, and he could see the first item was a chocolate bar. So. Someone at. Oh, okay. yeah. To see that? Yeah. Yes, Gotta be not. careful how you burst. And there, there's again that up back after blocking the butterfly. <laughs> Cold burst. We'll talk about that after. That's pretty funny. For sure. We've talked about that before, how bursting in this game, and especially against a character like Anji, who's whipping around a lot of invul and guard points, can be very risky in a way that you wouldn't expect it to be, just at like a basic level. Ooh, that is an overhead. It looks like Kenesk maybe, maybe doesn't know. Okay. It pa I think Pandroid got that donut. <laughs> I think he reeled him into it. So is that, I missed who won uh, game one. Is that 1-1 one, one, or is it's that 1-1, one, one. Pandroid. Okay, Kenneth. that's what I thought. Yeah, tied up right now. Uh, someone asked, was it this game or Rev that Foss didn't have bad items? Define bad items. Do so you mean like hazardous items? Yeah, I mean, I think the consensus is the items overall are better in this game. But I definitely would not go so far as to say the items in Exert are bad. He can blow himself up, so if you're looking for something that can actually hurt him, his bombs hit both players. Ooh, the auto guard. The jump ass. Dude, I had no idea the door had like a hurt box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice fusion. The first that time, dooring out. We're seeing a lot of regular door usage from Pandroid. Yeah, and one thing uh, I'm noting here from, from Pandroid, so I keep talking about Jump S, and I think after, you know, seeing more gameplay, nice avoidance of the uh, Mini Potemkin, it's, uh, it's not as much of a selection where he's, you know, making a nice decision to use Jump S, he's just always using Jump S, which, you know, there are worse buttons to hit, but the, the kind of problem with that, the weakness of that is that Angie's other Jump Normals are all very good as well, and if you can choose the right one for the different situations, like right there, if he would have done jump D, that was a perfect example. Uh, jump D probably would have hit Faust there, but jump S hits more downwards, and Faust was above him, so, you know, obviously not going to work there. So I would definitely say for, for Pandroid to uh, try to experiment with some of the other jump normals. Yeah, for sure. It, also, to go back a little bit, it's uh, unfortunate that the <laughs> mini Potemkin in that last round was still on screen. Pandroid still managed to find the better end of that round, but that could have gotten bad. Yeah, yeah, he kind of put himself back in the in the frying pan there. Okay, so Kenneth obviously does know that's an overhead block. It's twice in a row. Very nice. 
for sure. And we're going into the last round here between these two players, Kenneth and Pandroid. It's a knockdown. Oh, and he's got the protection of the mini Robokai. Unfortunately, the mini Robokai kind of swerved into him on the way down instead of actually landing. But... Okay, item. Is that another... Oh, I thought it was another mini Potemkin, but it's just the, the color scheme. God luck. Oh! Ooh, the uh, Chikua. Nobody got it. That worked. Okay, stuck in the corner here. <gasps> oh, that's gonna hit, yeah. Nice. Uh, somebody's gotta choose something. <laughs> Bandroid taking a ton of damage there, both of them just oh. chilling. He tried to oh. command that, we got 2H, that should be enough, burst! Oh, 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 what's gonna happen? Oh my god. Oh. Pandroid has right, well, literally Pandroid... a pixel. <laughs> yeah, and he's sitting on his burst, I mean, he, he can goal burst if he gets an opportunity. Oh my god, the hammers. Nice anti-air 5k, very nice. Did you see that the invincibility on the dust there actually came into play? That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, let's see. Um... Oh. Alright, so you got my game feed, right? Is it is it smooth? Uh, I know last uh, last tournament we had some issues. I had to lower the frame rate. Uh, keep doing stuff. Let me see. Uh, Alright, let good me get me. in with... Uh... I want to show... From Faust's perspective... Oh, Kenneth the character the screen right. once it once again destroying me. That the, the Tenno <laughs> matchup, me versus the character select screen. Ryan is way louder than me. Okay, let's adjust this boy a little bit. Every time, y'all y'all let me go if that's okay. Okay, where I have Ryan at now. Ryan, say some words. Uh, these are some words in my normal speaking voice. We're gonna look at Faust and Angie. How's that? What do you think, everybody? Is that good enough? Sounds fine? Okay. So, um, really good stuff from both sides. Super close match. Uh, one thing that stood out to me, we talk about this almost every time we see a Faust, um, the Coward Crouch. It, to me, it's like almost Faust's defensive option in a lot of cases and a lot of matchups. Uh, and this is certainly one of them um, where characters that try to do Oki with a meaty projectile um, you can really kind of put the situation on its head by threatening Coward Crouch. It's not something that you want to do every time, um, but it's something that you want to threaten. So you want to do sometimes and force them to to defend against it as the you know character doing Oki. So for example, if if uh, I do a meaty butterfly here and I wake up holding down forward, mm -hmm. you can see that the butterfly is going to go over. Now the tricky thing about this is Depending on how meaty the butterfly is, uh, that's not 2P. Um, the character, like, th this is also really useful against um, Kai, same idea. Um, yeah. Where they can actually defend against this by doing a very quick button after, and while you're still crawling forward, um, you know, they'll hit you because you're holding down forward, not down back. The thing is with the butterfly, because it's only a single hit, you can, uh, you don't have to coward crouch for very long before it's over you and the thing is even if you coward crouch a little bit and then go to block you'll make the butterfly hit you more meaty and uh that's still better because when it comes down it has less of a chance of hitting you um let me see if i can actually show this something like that um but yeah you want to do this to some to some degree yeah uh just so that they can't do their best mix up and sometimes they're gonna have to protect against this and once you start doing it a little bit, they'll, you know, have to, you know, mix it up a little bit more to, to protect against it. Yeah. And so it's, it's something to keep in mind. It's something mm -hmm. that you see a lot when you're watching, like, really good Faust in this game. It's, like, bizarre how much stuff he can go under with Coward Crouch. And like you're saying, right, just throwing in it, it in as an option to, like, force them to do slightly better, pre like, worse pressure on you by trying to do a light normal is, like, super valuable, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, because, you know, when Angie does, you know, something like this and then this to stop the Coward Crouch, he's not mixing you up, right? And that's that's the important thing. So once you get him to do that, then you can stop doing the Coward Crouch, and he's not really getting good Oki off of that. Um, oh, Ken Keneskin chat saying they do it all the time against Kai, but didn't think about it with, with Butterfly. Yeah, I think it's actually better, um, and it, especially because 
it, it, it kind of takes the force break butterfly off the table, right? You just coward crouch and, you know, it's going to weaken the unblockable significant amount. So um, definitely something to uh, look at. But overall, good stuff. Um, probably be seeing more of you in a little bit. Uh, just real quick for, for Pandroid. Uh, I talked about it during during the match, so I'm not going to talk about it too much now, but definitely experiment with your other air buttons. Jump D is just an insane button. Um, when they're below you, don't forget about jump P also. It's a little less committal than jump S. But as you are obviously aware, because you use jump S a lot, jump S is really good too. Um, jump H is, is good. It has its uses, but I would say the main three are P, S, and D. And then jump K is m much more niche, so don't worry about that one as much. Um, the other thing I just want to mention real quick, there was a couple times when you did stuff like this. Um, and then you were kind of locked into doing uh, S Fujin because you did um, a combo into um, into 6S. Um, let me make sure before I say this. Yeah, um, you can just do uh, 5S, 5H. Uh, and this is just way better because you get H Fujin instead. So this is kind of what you see all the time. Um, usually when you see uh, 6S, it's like um, 3K 6S. Or no, do I have that backwards? Yeah, I have that backwards. <laughs> 6S, 3K. And then, uh, you know, you see it like raw and then confirmed raw into S Fusion. Um, or also, actually, you can do um, this also on like crouching or counter hit, I believe. Uh, just not on standing. So, um, but yeah, but I think in general, you want to avoid um, this uh, once you've already confirmed the hit. You know, if you're, if you're just like poking... This is this is different. Maybe there's some uses for that, um, but you know when you when you do something like this, there's no reason to do that because um, you, you're way better off just doing um, this and getting the H Fujin. So, yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, that seems like the Anji 101. I feel like me and you, Ryan, are kind of developing our own like curriculum here in terms of exactly like, common feedback that we're giving to like the same characters. But I think that always makes it valuable to hear it like directly after a game like that. Yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly. Also, I, agree. I think on that end, we're ready to jump into our next one here, which is going to be Flam Octopus going up against George WP. And Flam Octopus, you know, uh, I could be horribly wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that they're relatively new to uh, Guilty Gear as a whole. Uh, they have played quite a lot of Street Fighter V. They play Honda in that game, and Flam is seems like they're going with uh, the, 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 Johnny here. Johnny versus May, the canon matchup. Indeed. Um, I love Johnny. Johnny's so cool in this game. <laughs> so, good good choice. I already approve of your choice, uh, you know, two seconds into the match. For sure. Uh, Whiskey asks, is Coward Crouch is the name of uh, Fong's movement Street Fighter Five? I actually forget. Do you know where that word comes from, Ryan? Uh, if I think about it for a minute, I can probably remember. It's like, it, it's like a lot of other things where, you know, the first character that had it in a game, that's the official name of it, and then everyone after that that's just what you call it. You know, it's like a like a tiger knee, you know? It is it's, Blanca, uh, right? Someone said Blanca. I think that's oh, right. Oh, I think it is Blanca. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she better four, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I don't think he was the first one to have it, now that I think about it. I think there were other characters in other games that had it before him, but I guess he's the most famous. Oh, nice try on the combo. So you, you said you think uh, Flam is fairly new to Guilty Gear, but it looks like they've already got uh, a decent handle on... Um, you know, some some simple Johnny combos. That's that's pretty nice to see. Yeah, which is fantastic. Uh, definitely, I think Johnny's movement is weird, and that's something I want to point out that we'll probably see a little bit here from Flam. Not to pick on him, but like getting used to controlling this character is very odd. Yeah, no, definitely. Wow, this I, I is think I think it even goes beyond that to say that that that's really one of the character's main weaknesses is just a, a weakness in movement options. So, you know, once Johnny gets where he wants to be, he's he's pretty strong, but it's the issue is getting there. Yeah, it's, oh no, getting, oh What wow. a block! I can't believe that. Yeah, it's just one of those things, like when you see a Johnny really schmoozing around the screen, like doing the barrier cancels, it's difficult. If you go into the lab and you just try to do it, I think you'll be surprised at how hard it is. Okay. 6H into a uh, command grab seems to be the go-to here for George. A little bit of a drop. Oh my god, the anti air dolphin, it was still there. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, yeah. Uh, May, absolutely one of those characters, right? That a um, little bit of a, a knowledge checky character, just in terms of she can apply a tremendous amount of pressure and damage to you if you're not super familiar. 
Uh, and also, once you are familiar, she can still just do that. That's what she does. But things like her meaty uh, 6H, things you just have to be, like, super aware of in this matchup. Yeah, no, exactly. As a matter of fact, I was literally just writing down some other buttons that I wanted to bring to uh, George's attention, and uh, 5K was one of them for, for the meaty, and just as a poke, it's, it's just all around good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for a simple strategy, what George is doing right now is 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 pretty good, just as a, as a very, you know, simple strategy to start with. You know, the, the meaty uh, overhead, nothing wrong with that. Whoa, the 6P, scary. Yeah, that was super... Oh, a little bit of a miss there? Okay. Yeah, no, a little too no. early. That was weird. Yeah, Flam, maybe just having a little bit of, uh, you know, tournament nerves happening here, not in full control of the glasses, man. Let's see if you can turn around. Okay, Jackhound! You know, that okay, move, a little bit of damage. I cannot Ooh. believe that actually anti-aired vertical dolphin. That move is <laughs> like Johnny's sword actually reached low enough to do that. That is so privileged, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Johnny has some nice hitboxes on, on some of his moves. Okay, good burst. Nice. On the toes, Ooh, yeah. The stagger. George uh, utilizing a lot of overhead kiss, which I mean makes sense, right? It's not the easiest thing to punish. It's not like she's stuck in animation for 20 years after or anything. Nice. Nice, okay. Okay. Well, oh, that's. Oh, nice faultless. Oh, well, wow, it, it completely whiffed, but good awareness <laughs> to faultless. That was great, yeah. Oh, oh nice oh. punish! <laughs> Okay, good try, good try, good try. Oh. What was that fake out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, good barrier, dog. Oh, try to dash. Yeah. yeah. And I think what we were seeing there also, another one of those things that makes Johnny a, a little more awkward to control than I think he may look at times is that you have to remember that if he whiffs a move, the amount of recovery he has is insane, right? Like, he uncheats, yeah. especially, like, 5H and stuff like that. He's really stuck in that animation for forever. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, he, he definitely is a precision character. And, and again, this goes back to the issue of movement. You know, he's not he's not the type of character where he's, he's going to be whiffing a ton of buttons outside of range. There are a couple of buttons that you can use just from, you know, outside range, but... Not, not really your H buttons. These buttons are designed to make contact with the opponent and not to whiff. So again, it just stresses the importance of, of movement and getting into the right range with the character. So um, let me show a couple things. Am I am I good? You got me up here? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So um, for Flam, um, you know, it seems like you're you know you're, you're learning. You, you have some 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 good ideas of what you're trying to do. Um, I would say what we were just talking about about you know what buttons you can hit at certain ranges and stuff. I would look at, um, you know, from these kind of ranges where you're out of range, um, 5K is just a fantastic button. This is like, if you're not sure what to do, I would say this should be your your go-to button. It's it's just a really, really solid button. It's good, good hitbox, good hurtbox. The way he, like, lifts his leg, this is like one of those, uh, you know, like, uh, for the Street Fighter players, like uh, Street Fighter 4, Able, you know, uh, light, standing light kick, or, you know, th this, this is just like one of those timeless moves that, you know, tons and tons of characters have where it reduces their, their hurt box uh, by their leg because they lift their leg up. So um, this is just a really good button and what you can do is buffer 5H after it. Um, that's like the natural, whoa, stop it, man. <laughs> uh, that's like the, um, where is this? That's kind of the common string you would do after, after um, 5K. What is she doing? May doesn't listen to you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, what is it doing? This is so uh, weird. Is your game possessed? Yeah, I don't know. What did I just set it to? Oh, uh, sorry. You're good. We're all very scared right now as to why Ryan's game has May trying to kill. Yeah, me. I don't know why she's doing this recording. Anyway, um, I'll look at this after in between the matches. But um, yeah, so I would look at that. Um, the other thing um, that that I would recommend looking at is um, you know doing strings into coin, um, just as a way to end your string. Obviously, you don't want to do that all the time. You do have a limited number of coins, but just for now, to get yourself kind of used to you know that kind of sequencing. So something like what I was just showing, five K, five H into coin, something like that. 
Um, it's just like a good solid sequence, and then once you get a little more comfortable the, with the character, you can alternate that with um, with miss cancels instead, and that's kind of like the the very simple 50-50 that, that Johnny does to, while pressuring. Um, but other than that, yeah, good stuff. I think that the only um, other thing I'd throw on here is that, like, as Johnny, if there's rounds that you're ending where you're not out of coins, that probably means that you're being a little too frugal with them. Like, while they are a limited resource, like, you need to find the balance, right? And it's easy to start and be way too on one end of the spectrum. So I think you should maybe try to overspend sometimes and just run out of coins and get used to what that feels like and try to find the medium, right? Because coins are so important to Johnny, like, at, a, at the core. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I, I would rather be, uh, you know, too free-flowing with the coins than too frugal with them. Because like you said, it's it's his best move, basically. Um, it's just like one of the best moves in the game in a vacuum. The, the part of the balance of it is that you have a limited number of them, right? So, you know, you want to use that when you can. Yeah. Um, and then just real quick, I know we have our next match lined up, but just want to talk about George for a second. Um, good stuff, like I said, during the match. Um, great, you know, great kind of level one strategy that you set up for yourself using the, the stagger moves into the command grab. Nothing wrong with that. I would experiment a little bit with some of the other buttons. 5k is an amazing button. It can go over lows. It's throw in vuln, um, so it's a really good meaty. Uh, it has good gatlings, uh, so definitely take a look at that. And then 5h also, just 5h as opposed to 2h or 6h. Um, it's really plus on, on block. It's relatively fast. Uh, staggers on counter hit only. Does, it doesn't stagger on normal hit, I don't think, but um, it's just a really good button. Um, so stuff like we've shown before with other maze, uh, 5H into 5P, 5H is like a very simple frame trap, stuff like that. So it helps develop the, the command throw game because, you know, you want you want some solid strings that the opponent is scared and, and wants to block. That way it sets up your command grabs better. So... Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Hundred percent. But yeah, like we were saying, overall really solid play from both players. Yeah, the one other thing is uh, uh, for Flam, just in terms of like doing Johnny's miss cancel stance stuff. I think that like that's one of those things that can sound really intimidating at first to try to get used to, right? Because it uh, honestly, I think it's like what I was saying earlier, where Johnny's basic movement I think is actually really difficult. I think miss cancel stuff is actually surprisingly easy, like for how powerful it is, even if you're just using it in a limited capacity, right? Like. Just doing point blank like 5H miss, ca miss finer cancel like you're now super plus and life is good right like it's and that's not a, I think a super hard thing to throw into your game plan so I think it's something to worth going for every once in a while. Yeah, I would say like like most things that we talk about, the end goal way off in the distance is that you become so comfortable with the character that you can freestyle, you know where you want to do your miss cancels and where you want to do coins and you can kind of freestyle things on the fly. But that's that's the end end goal. Yeah. So your goal immediately, you know, your 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 first step towards that goal should be to think of, think of some strings that you like, like the one that I was just showing, just very simple 5k 5h, and just learn how to miss cancel just off of that. And and in your head, kind of think of it as a fixed sequence where when you do 5k, you do you know 5h and then miss cancel, and just get the muscle memory for one string. And um, you know, and then and then go from there. And just by getting the muscle memory down from the one string, you'll be able to then take a step back a few weeks down the road and apply that you know that one piece of the string, the miscancel, to some other normals and just develop slowly that way. Hundred percent, right? And I think like when you see someone like freestyling or something like that at like a super high level of play, it's usually more just like they have a couple of options that they know that they can go with in any case that they're just hyper familiar with. So it's not literally like they do 5k and they're like, which one of my 30 options can I yeah. go? Like, it's like they know yeah, yeah. generally what they can probably go into and usually try to pick between just like a couple of them. Um, exactly, exactly. And with that, we are going to be getting into our next one for Ryan's sake here, because uh, these names <laughs> don't call this man tiny butt cheeks. That is General Jenkins <laughs> going up here against Mocha. Uh, but for the record, real quick before you can just some uh, quick bo bookkeeping. Alex is talking about it in the class. Yes, Alex has been expelled along with another player. Just we we sniffed him out early on. We think they're a little too good. It's nothing personal. I hope you enter our unrestricted tournaments where I show you do super well. Uh, I think that I'm. it's cool that you see yourself as a beginner and someone who's learning, but sometimes you walk in and you just fist to the North Star, punch someone, and they go like, I don't think this guy's a beginner. <laughs> Nothing personal. All right, so I know we've seen uh, Jenkins before, so returning Cliff here. Yeah, for sure. And, um, wow. and we were talking about lack of dizzies, but, uh, but uh, here's a dizzy right now, so... 
Yeah, look at that. Words are out. Nice. Alex said he didn't graduate from the beginners. Eh, I think of it as an early graduation. Or an expulsion. Really, whichever one you want. <laughs> but, okay. Words are still there. Oh, oh back throw. Far. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird mechanic, it's something that comes up often, just because Cliff can only sidestep so many times, and it's dependent on how much stun he has on him also for its percent chance to, like, fail. Uh, and it's it, whenever that happens, he can just break his back and Cliff players get That's gonna fish. Yeah! yeah! Oh, man. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I've definitely seen at least one Cliff player complain about this matchup, just because uh, Cliff has a lot of the neutral that he wants to do, right, can kind of get thwarted by Fish. That won't be, right? Like, obviously, on paper, Drill is fantastic against Fish. But Cliff does have a lot of big single-hit swingy moves. Um, so Fish can be a little hazardous for him, but also just uh, Dizzy is so mobile, and Cliff is not conventionally mobile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. OTG. Nice! Got okay. the FRC. Dizzy just does have very low stun, so I don't mind that FRC into the extension just to try to increase the stun there. Uh, not a bad strategy for the matchup. For sure. Mocha is going to take the first one there, but what you were just saying, right? It, Guilty Gear stun is goofy because while damage scales relatively harshly, uh, stun is, like, weird in that it kind of doesn't. Like, it doesn't scale nearly as harshly as you would think throughout a combo. So, like, if you're doing moves that, like, have properties that are, like, do lots of stun, <laughs> like, it will do a lot even later into a combo. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so game two here. Wow! Whoa. Dude, what are these trades? <laughs> Whoa, and that throw also. Scrambly, okay. This is where Mocha's life could really get turned upside down. Okay, the defensive throws are working for Mocha, though. It's yeah. two in a row. Oh, and the delayed air dash, very tricky. A little early on the meaty ice spike. That's what? gonna hit the fish again. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't really that, even that, have... that that super is a single hit. So uh, with the fish out, it's just never gonna work. I'm just surprised that hadn't extended a hurt box for Dizzy to smack. It felt like he was really yeah, far away. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this could potentially be the last round here for Mocha. Uh, let's see. Nice. That oh, was the a cool reset. reset. Yeah. <gasps> a whiff punish footsies in my guilty gear, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are these the ground-based footsies? We found them, everybody! That uh, Guilty Gear is known for? Is this what everyone's been talking about? <laughs> Dizzy versus oh, Cliff Yeah, I was gonna a... say that... That's gonna be an RC. Sorry, what were you saying? I was gonna say, Dizzy versus Cliff is a ground-based footsies. This is what yeah. we've come to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he's trying to flail at the fish, but it wasn't going in. Yeah, and I think uh, Mocha was trying to do a force break and get a 5D instead. Yeah, did the... Uh, I will say, Dizzy's FB spikes, I think... If, like, we've talked about this before, force breaks are ridiculous in this game, right? But Dizzy's FB spikes have got to be up there. They've got to oh, yeah. be, like, uh, one of the better ones. They're insane. No, definitely. Definitely. Get the little oh, bit that of a burst. Oh, my God. He's still... Oh, oh no! It's still going! <laughs> oh, the oh. 5D afterwards! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Meaty words. Overhead. Oh, good, good block. Didn't <gasps> block the second overhead. The okay. Again. Another defensive throw. The defensive throws are really what's keeping uh, Mocha in this one. All right, blocking, good. Nice, very nice. Yeah, that was fantastic. General Jenkins staying alive, Ooh. but in a really bad spot. <gasps> okay, first slow. save. Oh, punish, punish, punish! No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, okay. Wow, what a turnaround. That was looking really bad for Mocha for a while, but they held it together. Yeah, held it together 100%. Um... Oh man, I was gonna say something. Oh, okay. Do I have brain worms or uh, is Dizzy's 6H actually a pretty surprisingly good anti air? Dizzy's 6H? Uh, I mean, if you do it like super preemptively, it's 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 something like uh, you know maybe like Eddie's 6H where you know the hitbox goes in the right place, hmm. but uh, you know it has no invuln or anything like that. So. Um, Wait, was that, uh... That was it. That was... Oh, I thought it was 1-1. One, one. No. <laughs> that um, was all. Okay. Um, I thought Jenkins won game one. No. Uh, yeah. okay, so let's look at... 
Yeah, I know it's not as good as 2S, but I, I've seen a lot of defensive throws from Dizzy players, and I've been wondering why, like, more so than other characters, and I think, like, I'm not sure if it's just that 6H tends to work out sometimes, uh, but I'm not super sure. So, I uh, so let's just go through real quick, um, you know, Jenkins, good stuff, um, I, I thought you won game one, I mean, I, I guess, obviously, I wasn't paying enough attention to, uh, the outcome of the rounds, I was taking a lot of notes, but, um, I, I think you played really well. Um, I really liked your. We talk a lot about having a, a flow chart and not the not the bad kind of flow chart, the good kind of flow chart, right? Being able to flow from getting a hit to getting a knockdown into doing Oki and then back to getting a hit, getting a knockdown, and kind of you know having a flow in your game plan. I think your your game plan was fantastic. I think where you started to go a little bit sideways was with some of the random supers and that that's probably more of a matchup thing than a than a general strategy thing because that that you know beam super whatever you want to call it that the shout super um is is obviously very good um it, it goes basically full screen it's got a nice hitbox it's pretty fast that kind of thing but against dizzy specifically uh we talked about it during the match while the fish are out the fish are just going to eat the hitbox and and that's it so that that one's kind of off the table in this matchup provided that there's a fish out and i think you kind of got yourself into some trouble not necessarily because he got directly punished for those decisions, but because you basically wasted meter. So even though the punishes were relatively low, uh, not having access to that meter, I think, probably hurt you a little bit. Um, other than that, though, um, you know, again, you were playing good. There's really not too much I can talk about that, that we haven't said before. Uh, you were using drill a lot, but it was working really well. Uh, obviously, to supplement that, I always talk about Cliff's really good air buttons. You know, don't neglect these. In this matchup, I think your strategy was correct, though. I, I probably wouldn't be doing too much of kind of doing nothing because you don't want to let Dizzy set up. You do want to stay in her range. But I think also more of stuff like this, uh, harassing her with, you know, 2H and far slash uh, could go a long way for preventing her from getting fish set up and stuff like that while not being overly aggressive and overextending. Yeah, I think um, the, the only two things that I'll throw there on top of you, Ryan, is that... Um... Uh, our, our man's here was getting thrown a lot on wake up, right? Which is yes. kind of just, it's a getting used to Guilty Gear thing, especially plus R, just because it's so powerful on wake up. Uh, as Cliff, there's probably honestly, like, you could just stand at far S range a lot of the time while they're waking up to safely start get your, getting your cliff pressure going, but not put yourself at risk of getting thrown. I don't think it's worth it to be that close. Um, I also, correct me if I'm wrong, I think his JD is throwing Vol, because he hops off the ground a little bit. Uh, or sorry, not his JD, his uh, 5D. IP, um, I would assume so. Yeah, I actually don't know, but that that sounds it sounds, sounds right. right to me. I sound smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And I would also say what Ryan was saying in terms of not spending your meter. I think that uh, one of the best things to do with 50 meter, especially something like Dizzy, right, where neutral drill drill could be really good for breaking through a fish, is you can RC drill, and now it's even if they block it, your turn, right? Like it's a pure mix up, and that's so powerful for a character like Cliff. No, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm using the time while you're talking about that stuff to see if I can set up one specific situation. Yeah, okay, so I think this is it. Kind of learning dizzy as I go here. Um, so it should be... Uh, and then me, I spike again. So this actually came up during the match. I just wanted to show this. This is a very specific thing, but um, just something to show here. Uh, oh, it's, it's D. Okay. So this came up during the match where you meaty... I guess I have to move. Anyway, you, you do meaty ice spike in that spot, and uh, if it hits, the laser combos afterwards, uh, and then you could do another ice spike because the laser bounces them up, and then the second laser combos also. So it's like a ton of damage. It's all burst safe, basically, um, and it's just a way to lock them down in, in this spot where they have to respect the, uh, the meaty ice spike. Um, other than that, you were playing well. Um, the defensive throws, we were just talking about it from Jenkins' perspective. Uh, you were you were doing uh, you were doing really well using the defensive throws, and I think that's definitely what 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 saved you um, in a lot of those spots. Um, other than that, yeah, the, some of the mix-up stuff. I think you probably know you have to tighten up a little bit. You did some of the like fake uh, air dash, uh, you know, bubble stuff, um, but you accidentally air dashed over. Um, so you know, probably have to clean that up so that it looks more like this. You want to you want to get it right on top of them and not not go over. Um, that's just a practice thing. Um, but other than that, again, um, really good stuff. You also had a pretty good flow of, you know, getting a hit to getting a knockdown and to doing Oki. Uh, it's just your, your Oki in a couple spots was a little a little off, so maybe just tighten that up a little bit. But other than that, 
you know, good stuff. I can also see um, using a little more um, 5K. Um, you were using 2K a lot, which this is also a fantastic button. So I, I definitely don't blame you. Um, but 5K also um, has its merits. So you might want to look at that a little bit more too. Yeah, 150%. I think we're good to go into our next one, Ryan, if you are. Sounds good to me. Which is going to be, I think, and I could be wrong, I think this is going to be our first Eno ever. Wow. Uh, that sounds correct. Because I'm trying to think of advice I would have given to Eno players, and none of it comes to mind. I don't so. recall you just looking directly into your camera and saying, HCL more. So yeah. I, no, I don't know. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. And it looks like they're ready, and we're gonna see how this goes. So, Eno has a reputation, right, for being one of those characters who is super difficult. You know, you're gonna get melee hands, it's gonna cause you to have to take out a second mortgage. Like, she's known for being really complicated. Uh, I'll be interested to see here what Squid Ghost is gonna go for, because I do think she she has simpler stuff, right? And that's the same with everyone in, in Guilty Gear. There are characters who are difficult, uh, maybe to, like, do maximum damage with or something, but I'm gonna super interested to see here what Squid Ghost is kind of gonna pull out. Sick color, by the way. I approve of this Eno color. Yeah, and I would say that that is definitely one of the okay, <laughs> one of the uh, harder aspects of the character is that she really doesn't have like in the corner. There are easier things you can default to while you're while, while you're learning the character, but mid screen is really where it's tough. Where certain hits. There's only the one route, and it's the hard route, and there, there's really, you know, almost nothing else you can really do. So I think that's really the challenge of the characters is, you know, mid-screen getting conversions. Yeah, and I think uh, something I wanted to point out there is someone mentioned earlier that, like, Johnny does have an issue with getting low profile sometimes out of a lot of his pokes. And Eno Stroke the Big Tree, the move where she goes along the ground, one of the best low profile. It's like Grand Viper, but she gets pressure after, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So immediately round start with that, I agree, <laughs> Squid Ghost. Yeah. He does have a really good answer, though. Um, what is it? 3H um, is yes. just like a fantastic button for stopping stroke. Um, and it'll it'll be counter hit, and he'll get a giant conversion off of that. So um, he does have a good answer, but, you know, he does have to be careful of that for sure. 100%. Sajam says, give soul stroke. No. <laughs> <laughs> So once, uh, here with Johnny, we've been talking a lot about Eno, but once is doing uh, a lot of the stuff we were talking about before. He's using tons and tons and tons of mist cancels. So um, really nice to see, you know, some some Johnny pressure here. Pretty scary stuff, honestly. Close slash mist cancel, 5H mist cancel, that kind of thing. Yeah, Pretty scary. And even though once is down a lot of life here, he's still got a lot of coins. He's still got burst. That's so much damage. Oh. Yeah. Oh, went for a cheeky little reset there, but good awareness from Squid to FD after teching. Saved him there. You know, that's kind of the... That's what makes every Eno player go like, Oh, our life is hard, right? You see him around like that, where he was up so much life, did like 50 nasty mix-ups, and I got hit by one level 3 Miss Finder, and now he's here. Spend your meter. Oh, nice! Okay. I was you. thinking that whole time, force break note, but uh, yeah, HCL clutches it out there. Oh my god, the trades! <laughs> these, these trades are not good for Eno. You know, right? Get some momentum. Nice. And double overhead! Nice! Burst save. I like the strategy here. I like the recognition there from Squid that once they kind of lost control of the pressure situation, to actually just back up and do force break note to, to regain control. Really good uh, strategy. Nice! Yeah, 100%. Ooh, I think 6k traded there. Big hit. Nice conversion. Okay, yeah, could have got a little more, but very nice. Ooh, I think that was a little bit of a mistake from once, and Squid Ghost manages to come out on top. Yeah, the the stagger stuff is, is pretty tricky there with, uh, with Stroke the Big Tree. Yeah, that's like... Uh... You know, we, you just said it earlier that it's like, it's one of those important things that uh, you said that Johnny does have a very clean answer to Stroke the Big Tree. Doesn't mean it's less good in this matchup, right? Like, he can still, you know, is still very much able to go under a lot of, like, the more easy Johnny pressure a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, when, when Eno is pressuring him, it's not really realistic that he's going to do 2H Ooh. like that. A 6P is also really good, though. Yeah, what a hard <laughs> call out. <laughs> 
well, not that hard, honestly. It wasn't very risky, but you get you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Co. Okay, nice. nice. Oh no! Not oh, burst safe. Wow, I can't believe that missed actually. Yeah. Probably the best six P in the game, maybe. Nice. Oh, I don't know. It's it's up there. It's it's pretty good. Oh, what? Okay. Squid, Squid was just standing nice. there. With a, I don't know. I don't agree with Yomi countering in this game. It's not really worth it. <laughs> that was a really good shake out of the stagger, though. It was, yeah. Okay. Oh, so those dives are not great on block, but uh, Squid is making it work. Um, I, I don't know. I'm I, usually you want to IB those dives, but uh, obviously you can't do that every time. But um, I actually don't know offhand what they are on normal block, but I'm pretty sure they're still fairly significantly negative. I'm pretty sure too. Someone says Testament 6P might be a better move. Not in this argument. I think <laughs> we're talking about different things. Oh, great pickup. Nice. Try to freestyle something there. I like the attempt. Oh, tried Force Break. No, got jumped. D. That's going to hit. I believe you can get HCL after that, which you get worse <gasps> Oki. But, um. I don't know, I guess he's not that close to dead that it would have killed, but I don't know, HCL does decent damage. Wow, TK and Senga? That's like... I feel like he <laughs> hit him with an HCL. Like, from yeah, all the yeah. way over there. Yeah, yeah, basically, right? Johnny's like, man, that, that looks kind of good, let me try that. <laughs> Interesting, didn't Nice. I love this Johnny pressure right now with 3H, oh no. Okay, note. Oh, wrong note. Oh, punish, punish. Oh, oh missed it. A little bit of a mess up on the punish there. It's alright, it's alright. But stuck in the corner. Yeah, so in that spot, if you're not sure how to punish something, if it's a weird situation like that, uh, don't be afraid to just back throw as your punish. It's still really good reward just getting the positioning, especially for a character like Johnny. Yeah, okay, sure. first. Once on his last nice. life here. Okay! No, that was a huge oh. chance! Yeah. Nice! I was just gonna say, he's not dashing up a lot behind the coin. That was a fantastic yeah. use of that. Exactly what I was gonna say. Nice snipe. Oh. Okay, opportunity, yeah. Good faultless. Oh, didn't know which side he was on. Still alive, though. Oh, the trade. Unfortunate. But before you go into your whole thing here, Ryan, while you're booting up training mode, I want to mention that one thing I saw at the end there, and I think it's it's an important thing. I think this is one of those things that's really hard in fighting games and nobody talks about it, is like reactively pressing the correct button while in the air, like is weird, right? And I think that's honestly a big difference between like character people still getting used to their characters and people who've been around for a while, right? You even see it in like Street Fighter and stuff. Like once somebody starts like jumping, seeing that the other person jumped, and they actually go for their dedicated air to air instead, instead of just their jumping. It's a huge yeah. difference. Towards the end there, we saw him use Johnny's JH, which is an amazing yep. jump in instead of JS, right? Which is like the god air to air. And but we'll switch over here to the Ryan Cam. I'm sure you've got stuff you want to talk about. Yeah, no, I I, I saw that as well, and I 100% agree. It's just one of those things where, you know, you want to try to choose your button as late as possible for exactly that reason. Obviously, it was a little more premeditated there, where um, once kind of anticipated that you know was going to be still on the ground so what with the jh and and you know wound up jumping and if he had gone with jump s instead uh would have would have gotten the hit there so yeah i definitely agree it's again it's one of those easier said than done things but it is something you should work towards and and try to develop um to you know like exactly like bone said to try to choose the right button appropriately for the situation and it's the same thing we were talking about uh, a match or two ago with angie right where you know, you, you have this really good button, so it's very easy to autopilot to that button in all situations. But the reality is that in some situations, other buttons are going to be better. And, and you want to try to maximize, you know, your, your chance of hitting in all situations. So, um, but yeah, really good stuff. That was that was a really great match. Um, so just a couple of notes. Um, Bones actually pointed this out as well. I, I had written down something similar. Um, we saw some strings where, you know, you were doing, you know, stuff into coin. Fantastic. Again, you want to be mixing up your miss cancels with where your gaps are, with where you're doing coin. So that's all fantastic. You were doing a really good job of doing that. Um, I would just say, uh, like Bone said, you know, actually, when you do coin, part of the reason that you do coin is it's almost like a free, and I'm using air quotes, I don't know if you guys can see my cam, but I'm, it's like a free repressure because 
yes, it costs you a resource that you have limited, but that's the trade-off, is that you're using part of your limited resource to get a repressure. Whereas if you do a miss cancel and you just dash in, obviously if they're ready, they can jump out, they can hit a button, they can do all that kind of stuff. The coin is like doing a miss cancel, but with a projectile where it covers you basically. So generally you really want to take advantage of that. And in most situations, you're going to want to dash up afterwards. Uh, and this kind of leads me into the second point I was going to mention, which in this matchup specifically, I don't want to get too much into this, but um, if the Eno is using Stroke a lot defensively, which, like we said, is is a real thing in this matchup, you want to make sure you're using buttons that can hit Stroke. I think 5H hits low enough to hit it, and I'm very sure 6H does, but 2H also, or excuse me, uh, 3H. Um, this button is, is great for that. Um, hits all the way to the ground, stays out for a while, and then you can miss cancel it, and on counter hit, you get a, a huge combo. So there, there are some spots where maybe you would want to do something like this, and then do this to anticipate them doing stroke under the coin, but that's more of like a, you know, higher level thing in, 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 in this kind of matchup. There's a couple of characters that can do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, overall, really great. I would say, um, you know, your, your pressure and your, your neutral and stuff was, was very, very solid. Um, your your uh, confirms, which obviously is like the hardest part of Johnny, but you know, so it probably goes without saying. But um, you know, um, why do I feel like every one of, the, of your Johnny analysis is like use two H more? It's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean both two H and three H. I mean in this matchup, also just like random six P, which we saw at that one round start, is also good. Um, but I see we have our player, so let me just talk real quick about um, you know, so um, again, really good job. I'm really impressed. We talked about it at the beginning. You know, if you don't have um, HCL FRC dash, you know, dash down, uh, it's like a totally different character. And so you did a great job of having a, a simple strategy without using that. Uh, and I certainly don't fault you for not having that. Uh, the one thing that I would just mention, which is irrelevant to that, is um, think about ending your strings in a variety of different ways. So it's very easy with Eno to, to kind of, uh, you know, default yourself to, to, to this. Um, and... Uh, you know, um, kind of go through those motions because it has multiple lows and, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, just doing stuff like um, this and then dashing or just 2K and then dashing. And if you get all the way to the sweep, um, definitely rotate your options. Um, you were doing a lot of HCL. Um, don't be afraid to do uh, 2D into note on block. If, if once you train them that you do HCL, they're gonna wait for the HCL because the way you, you stop that is by being patient, letting it go over you, and then with punishing it. And so if you catch them hesitating, you can just cancel into note and get a repressure for free um, because the answers to that are totally different. And also don't be afraid to um, end your strings with, with stroke uh, on block. Um, that one's a little more obvious, I think. But um, I think a lot of Eno players don't uh, utilize block strings into note and block strings into just nothing into redash enough. So um, it's really, really important that you rotate those options. Yeah, 100%. And Jace, for the record, I wasn't telling you to map 2H to your turbo. I just meant that it is an option sometimes. And I think we can switch over here to Ryan. I think we are ready to get into our next one. Boom. Sounds good. Um, also, hey, Kugi, how's it going? Thanks for hanging out. Hope you're doing good. Kugi, veteran of the scene. If you guys don't know who Kugi is, do some homework. <laughs> if you don't know old who Kugi school, is, find out. Yeah, old school Slayer player. Uh, if you've ever seen any anything that says Broken Tear on it, you know. Had a lot of influence on the scene in many ways. Oh, thanks, Kugi. Kugi, I won't lie to you, because I've never lied in my entire life. I uh, have always had... I, <laughs> Spooky and Kugi existing in the same headspace at the same time has always made my gamer brain hurt when I was growing up. <laughs> but uh, now I understand. I know the difference. But I appreciate you here and hanging out. And I think uh, the next one here is going to be... Yeah, we're good to go, uh, Trin, if you can hear me. Which I believe is going to be a Slayer. Which means that we finally have a good person up here to play, Ryan. You know, it's been a while since you've seen a good person with good morals. <laughs> also, just in time for Kugi getting here, right? Yeah, I'm sure Kugi can uh, weigh in on some on some Slayer advice here. All right, so this is going to be an interesting matchup. I, I always I always like to talk about ground based versus air based, and you know, kind of what the characters are trying to do, where they're most comfortable. Slayer definitely wants to be on the ground, 
And Cliff is, is a little more well-rounded. He can he can kind of take the fight, you know, wherever it needs to go. So I would expect uh, Cliff to want to spend a little more time in the air in this matchup. And he can still control the ground using his air normals, so... Yeah, but that was actually, even though it was blocked, that was a fantastic choice from Captain a little bit a while ago to do JK, because, like, that does let Slayer fight with Cliff in the air. That button is redonkulous. Mm -hmm. Exactly like but, that! Like right there, <laughs> yeah. He had the conversion, too. That was the exact right conversion. When you're really far, when you hit an air-to-air -air jump K with Slayer, uh, sometimes you're, you're too far to really go into much else. Like, you can't do jump 2K, can't do, you know, jump D or something like that. So sometimes the, the correct... Uh, conversion is linking another jump K to get closer and then canceling it to jump 2K. Mm -hmm. okay, we'll oh! Uh, call it? Slayer's juggle combos, like, uh, we talked about this before, but sometimes cutting them short is a great idea, just knowing how to start them quickly and then end them, because, like, right. doing the extensions is really difficult, and it's not, like, the thing that you'll be able to do at all times, especially against a weird character like Cliff. Look at the damage, Ryan! Yeah. Wow, sweep going so far. Okay! okay. Anti-air Big Bang Upper. Uh, he tried to convert. I'm writing down a note. You can hear me click the yeah. bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Cliff using jump S, jump H. He can stay in the air, which, which puts him at lower risk to what Slayer is trying to do, while also controlling the ground, which is exactly what he did there. He did jump H, and it not only controls the air, but it controls the ground uh, below and in front of him, so uh, definitely an annoying matchup for Slayer just to try to work his way through the giant normals. It's not the kind of matchup where he can really inch his way in because you're just like always in Cliff's range, so yeah, fantastic again, again jump K. Yeah, it'll beat stuff like even things that it looks like logically should beat it, <laughs> like it will just uh, still just kind of stuff. A great conversion here. Of the double overhead. Oh! All right, so we're gonna have to talk about Slayer reversal options, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to talk about what makes this character. What makes you go yeah. from being like I like Slayer and nobody wants to play yeah. with me anymore? Yeah, exactly. Okay, BBU. Nice. Hey, wait, no ASCII yeah. art. That's where we draw the line. Mod, start shooting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit too high there, so the jump D did not knock down. Uh, Slayer's jump D is not a guaranteed knockdown. Oh, nice. A lot of point-blank 2Ds for Captain that are kind of landing him in hot water. Wow! Wow, <laughs> Cliff's sweep is just... just the bro. The hitting old man's everywhere. moves. <laughs> that double overhead is hitting, like, every time. Wow! <gasps> wow. Oh, uh, he could have shook out of that for sure. Oh yeah, but that was that was unnecessary. Unnecessary really violence. <laughs> That's gonna be a quick 2-0 there from G Dom. Um, and we got to talk about a couple things. And while you're setting that up, I'll I'll start here a little bit, just talking in some Slayer stuff. Uh, that uh, you're gonna talk about a little bit more, but just one specific thing is after Big Bang Upper, I think immediately trying to go for JK is kind of a trap. It seems like what you'd want to do. Like, it seems like a logical choice, but, like, uh, I think that either going for 6H just into K-Dandy Bunker or going for 5H into K-Dandy Bunker is, like, a much better idea, usually. It's more consistent. It'll work on more characters. And to be entirely honest with you, it does, like, 90% of the damage. Like, you're really not missing out on much, so... That's the one big thing that I would just say from the Learning Slayer corner. I would not try to do JK after Big Bang. I think it's way more awkward. It makes your height crazy. Yeah, so yeah, so let, let's talk about uh, conversions a little bit off, off, the, off the kind of tail of that. Um, so I set the dummy to jump here because the kind of the thing to consider with some of Slayer's hits, when you get them raw, sometimes you have to consider height. And with certain hits, there is a reason you would want to go into immediate jump K. But like Bones was just saying, Big Bang Upper is not one of them. So here, this is non-counter hit, uh, just regular Big Bang Upper, non-counter hit. I'm going to try to hit him as high as I can. And look at the untech time. It's still right before he hits the ground. So even if you hit this super, super high up, you'll still be able to get a 5H or a 6H like Bones was saying. So there's no urgency in uh in in trying to meet them up in the air and, and you'll get a, a much more stable combo by letting them come back down 
Now, the the one time that I do tell people uh, to be to have awareness of height is is on on this move uh, oh, crosswise. So this move, typically when you hit them on the ground, it's fine. Uh, you can get you know depending on the weight, you can get five H or you know map or like di different things depending on on the weight class and stuff like that. But generally, when you hit this as the starter, you can get tons of stuff. I think the most simple standard thing would be um would just be like 2s so just you know something like this into 2s into whatever um however if you hit crosswise high now this is a different story this is the one time that i think you need to look at um doing an, an immediate jump kick as you can see there the unteckable time is very very short um so you know these are these are some situations where you there is some urgency to hit them before they're able to tech but this is this is really like the only one um so beyond that, the other stuff that I wanted to talk about real quick is um, reversal options. So uh, there was a couple of times where we saw you using um, Big Bang Upper as a reversal, both just out of block strings and even on wake up. Um, it's really not that good of a reversal. Which is um, so it, fucked up. That is such a trap, Ryan. <laughs> it looks like it why, is. Why? What do you mean? <laughs> it looks I mean, it like, looks like it is because it, like it looks like a DP or something, right? Yeah, but, you know, if, if I just do like... Uh, uh, let's see, something like uh, this, and I try to go in between, you can see I just get hit. So it's upper body invuln, but it's not lower body invuln, um, and it's it's like above the knees or something like that, so it does have a decent amount of invuln, but it's not even especially that fast. Um, so it's like, a, it's like an okay reversal, and the thing is like, if that was his only reversal, sure, sometimes you gotta throw it out there. The problem is, Big Bang Upper is competing against, against, uh, his this. 19 other reversal <laughs> yeah and i mean this is just you know better in a million different ways um so i would just recommend in general we don't need to go too deep into force break dandy but um you know this or this or if you have 50 percent meter uh this is just true reversal that's like minus three on block or whatever so you know there's just there's just way better options basically um so and then and then just backdash you know if you just want something no meter that's that's really relatively safe just bdc uh obviously this takes a little bit of practice to get reversal um but very very powerful and, and also um, to tack on to that like backdash canceling sounds very spooky and i do think that despite what everyone will tell you and i'm looking at certain people in chat despite what people will tell you i think backdash canceling is pretty hard into things like mappa and stuff like that i think it takes a lot of getting used to um but just doing backdash into jump on like wake up if you can right. get that as reversal timing is so safe like it is remarkably difficult for people to punish yeah, a hundred percent. I'm glad you said that actually, because it's it's definitely worth noting. When I say backdash cancel, I'm not necessarily talking about stuff like this, where you're doing like BDC bite or BDC Mappa, or you know, you, some people do like BDC dandy and like weird shit like that. Yeah, but, do whatever. <laughs> yeah, but but ju but just very simple, just backdash jump um, is already like a really good reversal by itself. Obviously, it's very low reward because. You know, you're not throwing out a hitbox, but it's also easy to do, and it's extremely low risk. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, like, the harder stuff. That's stuff that you can mess with later. Um, it's a little more advanced, but just BDC jump is already, you know, fantastic. Um, all right, so we talked a lot about Slayer. Um, honestly, I don't really have too much to say to, to GDOM. You played fantastic. Um, you were doing great conversions on the air-to-airs with the Force Break. Your Oki was good. You were running the, you know, the the double overhead. I, I don't even remember. I think you were doing this. Um, what are you doing this actually? And uh, it was hitting like every time, so you didn't really need to switch it up much. Um, you know, your mix up was was good. Your conversions were good. Uh, honestly, really not that much to say. Um, I'm, I, I have a, a, a strong suspicion we're going to see more later, um, <laughs> but I really don't even have very much to say. Uh, there there was nothing really like blatantly obvious that was standing out that was you know, weak or, you know, that I would recommend something else. So really just solid play. Yeah, we should use that as the threat. At any time, if we think that you're really good, you have to fight Hotashi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, that happens immediately. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, that, that was some dope analysis. Let's hop on into our next match here. I mean, unfortunately, Ryan, like I was saying, we finally had one good match of someone who had some morals, but we are leaving morality territory now. We're moving into our next match, which is going to be Biken versus Milia.
Oh, two uh, degenerate characters, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two very, very powerful characters. But yeah, just real quick while we have one more second. Um, G-Dom, again, I, I, you, you played great. I would I would say, um, you know, talking about the mix-up a little bit more, you didn't have a reason to switch it up. Uh, so, you know, maybe you have a ton of other um, options that, that you are familiar with and you were going with that one specifically because it kept working. But, um, you know, I would, if you don't, uh, that is maybe something I would look into because the rest of your game plan was very solid. So, you know, doing different numbers of overheads, doing low, doing nothing into throw, stuff like that. Um, you know, Cliff, uh, Cliff's mix-up is surprisingly good for the for the type of character he is, so. Yeah, 100%. Also, thanks, Otashi, for the nice words. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, obviously, this is a lot of fun. I love watching some Guilty Gear. Um, and this is going to be, I think, a really interesting match. I think this is going to be a little fast, Ryan. This is going to be one of those ones you got to type fast into your notes. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, this matchup... It, it, it's an interesting matchup because Milia is the kind of character that can really open up Biken's weaknesses by doing just an immediate high low to not have to, you know, to try to bypass the threat of the counter basically and just open her up before she even blocks. But if the if the initial mix up is blocked, Milia is the type of character that kind of thrives on getting layered mix ups, you know, two, three, even four mix ups in a row sometimes. So, you know. If the first mix-up doesn't hit, Biken is one of the few characters that can actually just neutralize the situation immediately. So, can kind of go either way. We'll see. We'll see. Somebody says that, uh, I've heard a lot about Biken but never seen her in gameplay. Welcome to the Biken experience! Yeah. Alright, I, I like the S-Disc there, just controlling some space. So the, the first thing I'm, I'm seeing a little bit, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on, is, uh, is, um, is it Sire? Uh, I, let's go with Sire. Sire? Just like Sire? It. Sire? Uh, but not using too much Tatami. Uh, looked like that might have actually been a Tatami attempt right as I said that and got jump K. Uh, there's Force Break Tatami, which is also a great move. Wow! Nice block. Yeah. Oh, the burst. Pick up? Nice! Nice! Okay. On, on the ground over there. Yeah, see, not really seeing... These are the kind of spots where once the pace slows down a little bit, I would be expecting some amount of Tatami in neutral. And you can see here Sire's actually going in. There's no need for that. Uh, Biken can can zone. Biken does not need to chase anybody down. Millie has got to come to you. Make her make her navigate the maze of um, of Tatami mats, you know? Biken can zone alarmingly well. If you've never just had yeah. Tatami's thrown at you, she's like an angry landlord. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that was nice. Cool. Okay. Discs still oh, there. Oh, fall on. Yeah. I, I do. Could have maybe I, did. Uh, Could have maybe did. Um, what's the overhead move called to, to stall in the air? For Biken? Uh, oh, JD. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, well, that too, actually. But uh, no, this the special um, TK uh, Yozansen. Yozansen. There you I go. had to say TK to like get the flow of the name, <laughs> but, you know, because you always just say TK in front of it. I couldn't think of it by itself. <laughs> just, you have to do TK Yozansen. I had to like jumpstart my mouth, you know. Yeah. I had to like jumpstart it. <laughs> well, what's it called when you don't TK it? Uh, non TK TK. Yeah, I don't know what the move is called. I only know the move TK Yozansen. <laughs> oh man, life. Yeah. Nice. That's the second right, time that uh, Gianni has just whiffed that move in neutral and almost, like, that time they did die because of it. They almost died because of it because, uh, before. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, kind of like I said, you know, it, it's, it can be difficult for Milia to get momentum. Obviously, once she gets the knockdown, she can apply a mix-up immediately to try to open up Biken before she has a chance to counter. But even just getting that first hit can be a little bit difficult between navigating Biken's good air options and then when Biken's on the ground, having access to counters. Hit her out of uh, Sakura there. That was a sort of a Sakura. That looked like it again, maybe. So um, it looks like uh, Sire is definitely trying to use the counters pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Okay, hit out of the air. Wow, nice. yeah. I really love how Sire is abusing Biken's air buttons because they are good. And I, I totally agree with just trying to use them in situations like that. Because just so, that quick two hit did like, what, 20%? 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that was <laughs> really interesting. So yeah, I, I've seen a couple of times now, I, I definitely am getting the impression that Sire is trying to use Tatami in some spots in the air and getting Jump K instead. Wow, Force Break Tatami. Yeah, so okay. we're okay. That time the throw worked out. Oh wait, shoot, sorry, I accidentally, uh... <laughs> I, spoilers, this is the next match, everybody. I'm super sorry about that. I did not mean to actually hit the commit button. <laughs> oh, nice try on the pickup. Wow, I think the S disc ate the hit there. Nice nice uh, 6P anti air. A little too far for the 2H, but um, great reaction. And see, if I'm if I'm Sire here and I get anti aired by Milia. There's, there's like definitely, you know, something going off my head saying, why am I getting anti-eared by Milia? Something, you know, I'm, I'm going in too much. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, cause uh, we're seeing Gian, uh, Sire is doing a lot of like, I would say just conventional approaches, right? Just like dashing in like from the air and stuff. And I think Viking has a lot of more low hanging fruit of ways to get in a lot safer. Right, right. Wow, I thought that was gonna juggle for a second after the whiff. Sick. <laughs> Oh, nice. A little too far. Good try, though. Okay, hit. I've got a hair car. Really fishing for the uh, 5Ds, but uh, Gianni is doing a good job of just jumping out of the pressure when there's a gap, so the 5Ds, nobody's nobody's home every time. So uh, maybe uh, Sire needs to switch it up. Uh, m maybe do something into 2D instead. That spot was a little weird because they did 2H, and I don't think uh, there's any Gatlings out of 2H like that. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, I would maybe do some tighter strings that, that punish uh, jumping. So, you know, multiple lows, that kind of thing. Yeah, and in terms of, like, jumping in the corner and stuff like that, that's actually, funnily enough, because uh, for those of you who don't know, I was just commentating a plus R tournament with Leffen last weekend, who plays Milia. Um, and Leffen was talking about it while we were watching Amelia. That that's just like generally a pretty good strategy sometimes because Amelia, compared to other characters, when she gets up in the air like that in the corner, she's got a lot of ways to just get out. Uh, oh, absolutely. The the classic, you know, double jump turbo fall. You're gone. Yeah, it is really like you have to hard call that out a lot of the time, right? So I don't do not disagree with the uh, decision from that from Gianni at all. No, definitely, definitely. And there we saw the uh, the counter run from uh, Sire. So. Switching up, uh, you know, got punished for soccer a couple times, so it makes sense. Oh, nice. And it stinks when Harry Carr goes wide as Amelia, because you are just committed. <laughs> you are not leaving. Great conversion. Okay. Falls on the disc again. again. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's happened twice now. You know, I was when we were talking about it the first time, I was like, this is kind of a specific thing to be talking about. But it is worth noting, Viking has multiple options to stall in the air. So those kind of situations, you can actually save yourself if you see you're about to come down on something like that. Yeah, but that's also, we've talked about this before with Milia, where just like, disc in neutral is good. Like, it tends to blow up a lot of things. Great, no! A little bit of a drop on the punch. I think he expected that hit in the air. Gonna oh, call again. for a night. Thanks, thanks very much for hanging out, Pizza Pounder. You have a good night. Oh, stood up, saw the overhead, and then tried to counter. Oh, that's maybe not guaranteed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> saw the um, saw the the overhead blocked high, and then tried to counter, but the disc was still going. And I'm pretty sure oh. um, Sire tried to Sakura and got hit out of the start of a Sakura. So let's uh, let's look at a couple things here. Well, I think there was an Alt F4 situation there. I got shot back. Mm. But yeah, that was um. What you call it? Yeah, we, we've talked about this a million times before, right? Going for insta kills like that can be a little bit uh, risky. Um, obviously, hey, if it works, you get to pop off and all that stuff. But that was, I think, probably mash outable, right? Yeah, it looked like it was. Um, hard to say, but it, it looked like it was. But also, like, you know, it's a beginner tournament. It's not that serious. Like, you're really trying to mash on your stick. Like, you know, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, I, I definitely don't uh, don't blame you. But um, anyway. Um, am I up here? Yeah, you're good. Go in there. Okay, okay. So, um, first thing I think we just have to talk about is is just this. Um, like I mentioned during the set, it looked like, um, you know, that there were a couple of times when you were trying to do uh, Tatami in the air and you were just getting Jump K. Um, so, you know, might need to go into training mode, turn on the input display like I have here, 
and do it until you fail it and then look at your inputs and figure out why you're failing it because this is this is crucial this is a, a pretty important thing to be able to do with biking this is how she this is kind of what she does in neutral for a couple different reasons number one it just like fills time it's a very safe thing it prevents the opponent from coming at you it kind of makes it unclear what you're doing because then sometimes you can just jump and go in so you kind of like mask you know what your intentions are um and it's just a really solid you know really solid way to zone essentially um and then obviously once you get more comfortable you, you can start doing you know the the ID tatamis and there's a couple different ways to do that that we're not going to get into because they're advanced but um stuff like that so and then also when you get a knockdown um you know just being able to do something like this as a meaty is very very important so i would definitely uh look at that and just in general especially in a matchup like this you, you were being very aggressive and i almost wonder if part of that was because you didn't feel comfortable doing this whereas against a character like milia you can really play this you know kind of dash forward id back and just kind of you know do stuff like this and and just really uh you know waste time mm -hmm. and eventually she's gonna have to come to you and you know hit herself so um you know with pain it's it's a little you know there's a little more to it than that but you, you know you get the idea obviously you do want to use jump s and jump d as well um you know as other as other things to be doing but this is like kind of the central the, the centerpiece of the whole strategy um besides yeah. that uh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say the only other thing i'd say like the reason that's such a powerful centerpiece is that like that was a very aerial battle and like tatami mm -hmm. is not only a basically unmesswithable air to air move it also controls the ground right like so right. it is just a cold dead stop to a lot of melee shenanigans unless she's like higher than you and throwing a pin at you or whatever but like that's level two right i think at like level one like when you're figuring out the neutral you need to be able to throw stuff like that out and be a little more lame as biking because that's like then they get frustrated and then you hit them and do a billion damage right like yeah exactly and even even with pin like once the mat is out it'll it'll nullify the pin so you know you're opening yourself up a little bit but it's not even that easy to snipe this with pin really i forgot about but, that and um, i hate that can you patch the game so it doesn't happen <laughs> no promises no promises um so the other thing that i just wanted to mention is um and this is just for for any biking out there um baku just please uh baku is just an insane move um we talked a lot about the counters i could see you know you were going for sakura a decent amount there was the one time when you got the successful um counter run and that's great too um you know you can't use baku all the time it does cost meter uh it looked like also there was one or two spots where you did try because it looked like you got 5d out of blocks done a couple times uh where maybe you thought there was another hater you reacted too slow so i think you were going for it here and there but I feel like, you know, if, if I was playing Biken, this is how I would spend the majority I mean, of my beater. I mean, this move is just, it's just, it's just too good. Um, you don't even have to mess with the follow-ups right away. Just the move by itself. Um, it just doesn't have the weaknesses of, of some of the other counters. Um, it's faster, uh, has has invuln, you know, stuff like that. Um, you, you get combos on, on counter hits, or if they're close enough, uh, you don't even need the counter hit, stuff like that. So, um, just experiment more with Baku. You can even take it into training mode, like like I have here, and just record some some simple strings, and practice doing uh, Baku. You know, on, on multiple lows like this, it can be a little bit tougher because of the input. Um, so it does take some practice. Clearly, you can see I'm I'm not a biking player, um, but you know it is it is her most powerful uh, counter for a reason. It costs meter, right? So mm -hmm. um, definitely take a look at that. Yeah, I also uh, think that. Uh generally we were seeing an excess of meter right and that's just a really good way to just dump it yeah exactly exactly i mean biking doesn't have that many ways to spend meter or uh you know frc uh, tatami is very good but that's a little more advanced and has some more kind of uh specific uses but whereas whereas uh baku is just like you know all purpose if you're blocking baku is basically always going to be good so it's also one of the other key aspects of it is it's harder to bait uh, most of the other counters have very clear ways to bait it. Um, you know, soccer, you could just hit her. Uh, the counter, you can hit her low. Orin is slow enough that you can do something fast and block it. Uh, also, it's, you know, has a range dead spot and stuff like that. Baku is so fast that it's it's very, very difficult to bait. So, um, all right. So, again, just real quick. Um, great great stuff from both sides. Real quick for, for uh, Gianna from, from the Milia side. Um, you, had, you had a very... Uh, obvious understanding of you know the game plan and, and the routes you had some nice combos there one thing though uh that i think would have helped you a lot in this type of matchup where it's very air based is um using force break disc 
for stabilization in your combos to stabilize your combos so we saw you use it in a fixed combo at one point towards the end when you did the relaunch and you brought her to the corner and then you used the force break disc you kind of missed the ender with the dash but um you obviously have the idea but when you get a weird air hit um so you know if uh if the enemy is jumping let me set this real quick um uh why is my game acting so weird? I don't understand. I'm recording the enemy. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. So, you know, when you get like weird hits like this and, and you're not really sure how to stabilize the combo, um, you can just force break disc and it basically does all the work for you. Um, you just do this and then and then you can just relaunch and go into, you know, more of a stable um, combo. So, um, actually, yeah, that, that's not comboing. I think you have to do jump K. How you even combo into this? Jump slash. I know clearly I'm also not a melee player, but yeah, yeah jump works. slash. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, when you're doing air to airs, this is something I would I would experiment with um, because again, it, it is a way to stabilize. I think actually probably the better thing is to do like jump H and then IED or whatever. Um, but you know, anytime you're at a weird height where you don't really know what to do, um, you want you want to go into um, force break disc to stabilize. So, yeah. Yeah, I think knowing those, like, stabilization points comes up with a lot of characters in terms of, like, how it is that you can make your combo actually work in weird conversions. So, like, Soul's got FB Sidewinder, uh, Slayer has right. J2K. Like, there's a lot of things that you can do to just kind of go, like, what the hell's happening in this combo to try to, like, save yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I see some melee players in chat saying, like, um, after jump H, um, which, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know the right combos, obviously, but the idea is, you know, you want to, you want to just, basically, you just want to get into Force Break Disc as fast as possible. How you get into Force Break Disc, I don't exactly remember the, the optimal ways. I think it's like Jump HID or whatever, but, um, yeah, just try to get into Force Break Disc as soon as you can, and then you can go into a more stable route, so. Awesome. Well, with that, I think we're ready to move on into our next game, Ryan. I, our players have been waiting here for a while, you know, they're, they're blood hungry now. I say that, I, one of I, the I believe play. it. So I don't think a Justice player really gets blood hungry. They're just like, uh, I don't know. They're playing the clock. Anyway, XX Cheap Death Justice going up here against Chlorophyll Eno. Names are switched. But I'm going to... So we two Enos in one night? I know. We're blessed tonight. Well, I'm going to do the, the bunnies. I'm going to do the bunnies right after this, everybody. I promise. I know that <laughs> we're feeding the bunny streets. Uh, I'll do it as this. Ryan just uh, talked. I want to make sure our players get to play and we're not just totally icing them. <laughs> I promise. I didn't forget. So yeah, Chlorophyll going with Eno here. Ooh, a slightly different black Eno color. I'm with it. Ooh, Ooh the note getting denied by yeah. the nuke. Okay, yeah, Stroke, definitely a good answer to the nukes. Yeah, I was gonna say that on a basic level, right, Eno can Stroke under nukes, and that is something that uh, Justice to keep in mind. On the other hand, what we just saw is two quick conversions, and Chlorophyll is almost dead. That was a fantastic response there. That's, uh, I believe, 2H. Wow! Wow, 5H just controlling all the space in front of Justice. It felt like this that This matchup last... seems like it could be pretty annoying. I think probably HCL has got to be the answer, right, for all of this annoying uh, zoning? Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't really know how HCL works. Would it get nullified by the nuke or no? I don't believe so. It should go through. It's kind of like a laser. All right, Force Break Note's good too, but yeah, you still have to deal with the nuke, unfortunately. All right, that's another way to get in. Oh, the burst bait, okay. So that was the right idea to do 5H after blocking the burst. That's like a universal, like some characters, they get different burst punishes depending on how far they are and stuff like that. With Eno, you can basically just always hit 5H. It's the same way in uh, in Exert. Yeah, I was just, uh, people are talking about it in chat. I do think that Eno, like on paper, has more to work with in this matchup than some other characters too. So, but uh, does have to be careful, right? Chlorophyll is getting smacked just like that, trying to maybe approach a little too aggressively. And you can't, just as, as, as a disorienting character to fight. I think a weird character to just learn how to fight because it's not like once you get in, Justice doesn't have a lot of damage if you go in wrong, right? Like, it's not like the goal is just to get in. You have to get in safely. And I think that's really what's getting uh, Chlorophyll kind of smacked here a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we saw in both of those rounds um, just a, a nice clean 2H anti-air, which is 
that's that's huge. You know, it's not even like six P where it's going to be like scaled. This is just an unscaled counter hit starter into you know a, a, a high damaging air combo. So it's going to be a ton of damage. Yeah, hundred percent. Also, real quick, did someone really just follow this stream named Bibles Black? You anime players or something? Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm not so yeah, I mean, you can see here, Phil is is using a ton of uh, Stroke the Big Tree to get in, a lot of just raw dashing. Uh, I would really love to see more more HCL. I think HCL is, is the answer here. Because it, it, like what we were saying, what, what you were responding to from, from chat a minute ago, uh, that, that's good too. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Eno has a lot of tools to work with, but I think um, some of the tools, Justice actually has maybe above average answers to those specific tools. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then weaknesses to some of the other tools, like, you know, like, what does she do against HCL, really, you know? Yeah. Um, especially from, from a really far range, Did so... Did hole in one note? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah. Dude, it's like, you know, how people used to say in Marvel 2, you know, you, you, don't, you don't play Sentinel, you pilot Sentinel. Yeah. It's like, it's like you're a real note pilot here, you know, really navigating the, the terrain here. That was a very risky burst there from Chlorophyll. That's what, that's what we call a protagonist burst. You know, Chlorophyll's really hoping that they're the main character with a burst like that, but <laughs> now has no burst going into this round. So, uh, an attempt there to snipe with uh, with HCL, but was a little bit too high. Ooh, the frame trap there with the H Michael Sword. Oh, oh nice pickup. Oh, oh, had it. A little scrambly. This is this is a tough spot. Yeah, it's an 18 frame okay. overhead. She's a zoner. She needs it. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice pickup. Fixed the problem from last time. Nice. Actually got the conversion. Nice. Still alive. Oh my god. Dodge that one too. Okay. Nice. Corfield might do this. The double dash. Nice. No. Oh man. Tough. Tough. In a the really good attempt though. That was an incredibly good attempt. Okay, wait, let's go back to me really quick, Ryan. I do owe the stream uh, some bunnies getting treats. I, I, no I denied problem. Take them. Take your time, take your time. So we're going to do this really quick while you set that up. All right. Snow Monkey Funky, a.k.a. Rob, giving the big treats to the bunnies. By the way, this pen is new. I built it yesterday. It sucked to build. Thanks for asking. <laughs> took like three hours but all right we're in it thank you very much sorry i'm denying you more bunnies we'll, we'll give you some more bunnies while, <laughs> while ryan gets set up here and then we'll just let me know when i'm on all right let's switch over to the ryan cam all right bam you're good all right so uh i i always say this but that was that was a great match uh really well done from from both sides um, I want to see the match like, where we both just go like that sucks. I'm disappointed. Yeah, you guys are you guys are terrible. <laughs> uh, no, but really, it, it was it, the thing is what I, I'm not looking for like the level of play. You know, we're, we we all know, you know what this is. It's a beginner tournament, right? I'm I get more excited by seeing the ideas from the players, right? And and clearly Phil had a lot of ideas and was trying a lot of stuff in the matchup, and and they were all good ideas. You know, using force break note to get around the nukes, and you know. Try to use HCL in a couple spots. Um, so let, let's talk about some other options because clearly the nukes were still being a problem. Uh, Eno does have, you know, some mobility. Um, so one, a couple of things that we should talk about is if you get really cornered by the nukes and it's the horizontal ones and not necessarily the arcing ones, don't be afraid to use this as a as a movement tool. This is a movement tool. Um, you know, it's also a combo tool, but um, you can use it almost just like a. a jump an extra jump that costs 25 percent meter so um you know don't be afraid to kind of use it when you get into a bad spot to reset the situation and i know this firsthand as a venom player sometimes enos i'm you know I'm, i've got all, all these formations going and everything and they just go to the top of the screen and just switch sides and reset everything so you know don't be afraid to do that that's a very simple solution in a lot of in a lot of situations a little bit more advanced um actually let's let's test this before i show this because um, oh, let me turn this off of jump. Wait, Ryan, um, I'll be back in two seconds. Hold it down. He, yeah, no problem, no problem. So, first of all, let's confirm that this does go under, because I'm not entirely sure that it does. It does. Okay. So, um, let me record this. Okay. So, another thing, uh, if the nukes are coming at you, 
And we'll, we'll have to test it. Actually, let me test one more thing. Let's do, let's do this. Let's do this. So if the explosion goes off, the, yeah, I think I think if they manually do the explosion, this is like the, uh, the case with a lot of moves that low profile this or that go through it, is that if they manually detonate it, it will hit you. So this is not necessarily going to be a perfect solution, but it's an option you can represent and force them to sometimes blow up the, the nuke early. But uh, what I wanted to show was um, that Stroke the Big Tree has um, an FRC point. So it's another thing that you can use as a movement option, um, just if you need to move forward through something and you don't want to commit to the move because you're not in range. It actually has two FRC points. There's a, an early one and a late one. Uh, the early one is very short, so you can do it um, kind of like a dash. The second one I think is like after the hit or during the hit or something. Yeah, yeah it's like right when it hits. Um, so you can like get right in her face and, and throw her something like that. So, you know, so when she's doing, uh, if she doesn't manually detonate the nukes and they're, they're going a really long way, um, you know, you can potentially uh, use this as like a, just a way to get through the projectile. Um, let's see if I can do this here. Jesus, let me re-record this. So let's see if I can do this here. See, the trick is with the early FRC, it's so short that if I FRC it too soon, the nuke is still gonna be on top. So actually the short FRC, yeah, you really have to do it late right before the nuke hits you. So this is maybe not even that useful because um, she would probably manually detonate it once it gets that close to you anyway. Um, but there's also the far FRC, so um, just something to play with. Um, but yeah, like Jay said, the number one thing I was kind of working, you know, working from uh, less useful to most useful. I think the easiest answer is you just you just uh, HCL. Um, wait, wait, kick? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, if she's trying to set up nukes, um, you know, just get into range of HCL um, and and HCL her. Well, I guess get into range of HCL, you backdash to the corner and take one step. Yeah, I mean, you literally just get to, like, here. Yeah, you really don't have to get very far, and that's why, like, you just you just need to make sure that you're in this range all the time, basically, so that you can respond, you know, when, when they do uh, a nuke, you can you can react with uh, with HCL. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think if you had, had been doing that a little bit more, and, and the thing is, you don't even have to wait for her to do nuke, just... just harassing her with this from this range um you know what is she gonna really do um i don't think uh let's see i don't think michael sword will hit that far so like oh, that's the wrong one yeah i i don't think she could really contest this yeah so you know she's got to just wait for you to whiff it and then try to whiff punish it or something but um yeah so I think that was like the main thing. And and even though we're talking a lot about specific justice stuff, this is like an, just an Eno thing in, in general. HCL is just like, if they're moving around too much and they're not they're not respecting HCL, uh, which most, most players do not, this is like the sit down and shut up button, right? This is like, you need to relax and, and like, you know, hold still for a second. Um, you know, if they're trying to preemptively, you know, like we saw justice do, do this to, to keep you out or, you know, stuff like this, if they're like, putting out hitboxes to prevent you from moving forward, you just shut all that down with this. This is like the most, you know, important thing to get them to slow down so that you can actually go in. So, um, yeah, just really important, but especially in this matchup. Yeah, and that, and that um, kind of covers what we were talking about earlier, right? Which is like uh, safely going in against Justice, because again, it is risky. And you want to go in like super safely in a way that like an HCL is kind of how you make her want to stop pushing buttons if it is like something you're constantly threatening. Threatening almost as much as Graham Tolka's Donkula dropping the big sub. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ryan. I just wanted to segue that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, um, there's not really too much I can say for, for Cheap Death, unfortunately. Um, really just good play. I, I, you had the right idea. You know, the, the 2H anti airs were, you know, chef's kiss. They were perfect. Um, you got a ton of damage off of those. Uh, I would, if they weren't working as well, I would have recommended, you know, using more 6P um, as anti air, but the 2H is a, is a high reward and you were hitting it perfectly. So um, that was definitely good. Uh, you had some, some good 5Hs just to control space. I think this is a great option in this kind of matchup. Uh, far slash also, um, which I don't think we saw as much, but. Um, same idea, you know, just lets you con confirm it to Michael Sword. Stuff that we've talked about uh, a million times because we've seen so many justices in the past, but, um, you know, and then just 
again, stuff that we've talked about a million times, this is another matchup where because of uh, Eno's dash, he spends a lot of time in the air. So controlling the air um, with, you know, jump K and, uh, you know, uh, low Michael swords and stuff like that is, is also very, very powerful. But, I mean, you played the matchup great, so there's really not too much I can <laughs> I can criticize you on there. So uh, really good job. Yeah, Sigwin asked in the chat, does HCL shut down high nuke? Uh, like, if it's at a distance where it will hit justice, the nuke will disappear. Yeah, exactly. So, it, so. It, it'll shut it down just as much as the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the real question that, that you would need to ask is, does HCL go through nukes? And once you know that it does, then it's, like, irrelevant. Because if it hits her, it doesn't matter where the nukes are, they're all going to disappear. So, um, you know, as long as you can... And, and the thing is, the nukes have a lot of recovery. So if, if you're just in this position and nothing is happening and they just try to nuke, you can just react with, you know, if you're just, like, sitting there waiting for them to do something and they, and they do this, you can just react with this. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I think with that, we should probably get into our next match here, Ryan. I feel like the, our friends here have been waiting for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. we'll get into it here. It's going to be Boo Mono playing Johnny and Deco Fumo Death Cult playing Slayer. Great name. Great character. You know, I'm all about it. <laughs> Wait, po playing what character? I didn't hear. Slayer. Oh, Slayer. Nice, nice. A lot of, lot of Johnnies tonight, too. Yeah, the You'd love to see it. Johnny and Slayer night. You know, I'm all about it. Those are the two characters that I respect. <laughs> Romantic. Taking some notes here already. Wow, and the color choices? You know, Ryan goes pretty hard in his notes. <laughs> um, I'm actually taking notes from, from the last match, so that if we see those players again, uh, yeah. I can reference what we already discussed and not repeat myself too much. All right. You know, this matchup so, is a little bit mm -hmm. of the ground-based footies that we've been looking for. Just a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, you know, just talking about where these where these characters want to be. I feel like we've seen this matchup before, strangely enough, in in some of the previous tournaments. But uh, yeah, like you said, these are definitely two ground based characters. So, oh, unblockable, nice. Wow, wow. with the FRC and everything, let's go, dude. Okay, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Yeah, Someone yeah. get their mans. So, yeah, that was um, that was pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty clean. So Bumano has submitted replays to me before. Uh, so, you know, once again, just a little self-promotion. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty clean. Nice! Nice! That nice was actually... reset! Mm -hmm. Look, it's a damn match! Good oh, I love, I love what we're seeing right now. You know, we're getting later into bracket. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Oh my god, that 2D. Oh, nice try to combo off the tree. Good awareness. Didn't quite get it, but it looked like it was going to work. Umano's got to be a little scared here. Death Cult does have 25 meter, which is huge for Slayer. He, speaking of having meter, that's yeah, a good but... way to start a comeback. 5k, 5k, oh, 5k. I, I like that frame trap. Yeah. Hmm? A little too risky for Deco. Oh, the purse bait. A little too far. Sorry, Ryan. I'm getting real excited. <laughs> No, no, that's okay. I'm taking some notes already. This is a great match so far. Oh, the trade? Oh, the JH. Yeah, I like the patience. Both characters have 50 meter. What are we going to see? What's going to be the risk? <gasps> that was such a good reaction from Death Fumo. Death, uh, sorry. Oh, my God, this name. Uh, DFDC <laughs> uh, is what I'm going to say. Good reaction. <laughs> oh, no conversion. So that's something as a Johnny player to, to kind of look for when you do coin... You know, mid-screen in the corner like that, it doesn't really matter. Oh, nice try. Um, that if the coin hits, uh, you can use that to start a, you know, confirm. It's almost like a hit confirm. Yeah. Oh, the JP a little bit late on the jump cancel, though. I like the Divine Blade. Oh, oh that's, that's gonna, gonna hit. work! Get the quick grip of damage here on Bumano. Johnny's a little susceptible to that because he doesn't usually really have lingering hitboxes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is exactly... Oh, nice pick up off the counter hit, the counter hit Divine Blade with the ground bounce. Yeah, that was wonderful. So where are we in the bracket exactly? We're in losers somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm almost scared by that, that 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 these two people both lost to someone else. Bracket bracket's uh, a little little tough tonight, huh? <laughs> right before losers top eight round one. Wow. Yeah, geez, this is to get into top eight of our beginner's tournament? You kidding me? 
Yeah, this is a this is a pretty good match. Nice frame trap. 2D. Unblockable. Yeah. Oh wow, good challenge! Oh, I love it. I love it. Great awareness. Had had really the only option besides that was to backdash. So I I am down with that. The wake up 2P. You know, let's talk about bad feelings really quick. Bad feelings is when you're playing a game like Plus R that has no input buffer and you're trying to do Slayer Links and you just stand there after a 5k yeah. and do nothing. Yeah. Oh, that's punish. Oh, missed it. Okay. 6H. Reset, unblockable. Oh, Good missed challenge. it. Got 5H. Yeah. Probably wanted uh, a 3H, I would think. Dimax, okay. who's sitting up in winner's final, says, I gotta fight the guy who beat the Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Plus frames, nice good. block and a back nice dash. back dash after blocking the It's Late. The raw It's Late is plus, like, five, I want to say. It's, like, plus a lot. Maybe plus four, maybe? Oh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's one of those things that... Uh, something that a lot of people realize is that is much easier on crouching opponents. <laughs> so when someone's yeah. crouching, it's like a power trip. You just go like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice confirm. A little... Yeah, Johnny's pretty heavy. And that was a lot of hits before the BBU. ID out of the corner? No. So usually after that super, it, you, you wind up using it a lot in the corner because it's such a good reversal. And typically what you would see from Johnny after after uh, using that is the ID out of the corner just to switch sides. Because uh, you're not really going to get good Oki regardless, so you might as well get the positioning. What? What? Dude, I was just going to say a little bit of drop of the combo and then like, oh, wait. Counter. Uh, they, oh. Eternal wings. Uh. Yeah, a little too far. Oh, that's. Oh, I thought it was going to hit because he, uh, he uh, air dashed. What is happening? This is a scramble. Bumano, full meter, has the ability to do a reversal. Oh, just 5H. All right, the 5H. That's it. Is that 2-0? That was 2-0. Bumano's going to take it. That Man, that was Fast and the Furious, huh? Yeah, I mean, that was a great match. That was a great match. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about a few things. Oh, um, man. Let me look at it from this side. Probably be a little easier. Something that, uh, you know, while, while we're you're getting set up here, I'll switch over to your cam, but just... But... What you call it, Kugi? I'm interested to hear what you want to say about this. I, I think there's a school of thought because you had mentioned it. He would big bang upward very late into a combo to the point where like it really didn't add that much damage to it. Do you think it's usually worth it a 2D in those situations as opposed to doing big bang? It, it's, it's something I think because Slayer is such a meter hungry character that I feel like it's really easy to be like different schools of thought for meter management. But uh. I don't know. That was just something I noticed. Something to think about. If even if it's not, because I honestly, your Slayer looking kind of clean, though. I, I would feel like I'm a little out of turn trying to give you Slayer advice somewhat. All right. Whenever so you're good, one right? real thing while while we're letting uh, Kugi chime in here. So this happened pretty early on. Um, this is just a, a a small Slayer tip, but it it really goes a long way. Um, because you do wind up getting a, a decent amount of blocked bursts because of the nature of Slayer's combos. It's a lot of like, you know, uh, link type timing so you're not like doing chains where you're gonna you know chain a button into their burst you know you're gonna be naturally like waiting to do your next thing anyway so when you block burst we were talking before i mentioned with a with a different character how i think it was uh eno um you know with eno when you block a burst you just hit 5h and it's basically just always gonna work there's like very few exceptions uh slayer is another one of those characters it's it's just like universal you don't have to think about what you want to do uh you just do far slash uh, and what we saw from um, Deca was after the burst, we saw this, which this is easier, but you're kind of um, doing yourself a disservice because you're making the, the resulting conversion much harder because of the distance here. So if, if you if you if they burst far and you do this, um, I mean that was too far for it to even work. But you know from something like this, um, the jump K. I'm actually surprised the jump K is not hitting there. Let me try a little closer. Um, if you do jump K. See, like, that can happen frequently, where the jump K will hit, but the jump 2K won't. Whereas if you do uh, far slash, you're basically always... <laughs> Johnny's really heavy, so I have to do jump P probably, but um, far slash, because it moves him forward, um, you're basically always going to be in range. It's going to get you closer, you're going to get a better uh, burst punish. So um, I would just say, in general, that's kind of what you want to 
what you want to tend towards. It's um, bar slash, and it's just like a it's just like a muscle memory thing where you know after you block a burst, you, you just want your brain to automatically go to far slash. Can you also um, big bang upper it. Uh, you should be able to, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you you can do that too. Um, obviously that's you know meter starter and stuff like that, but um, yeah. Um, th and this was the same in Exert also. So if there's any Exert Slayers, uh, this is exactly the same in Exert. You just always want to do far slash. Um, other than that, good stuff. I, I think, um, you know, clearly you know the power of 5k, uh, so we don't have to talk too much about that. The only thing I would say is, in this game, you know, in, in Vanilla Accent Core, this was already good because you could hit Confirm into MAPPA and then you would RC MAPPA and get extensions like that. In this game, you can even do one better because, uh, you know, Force Break Dandy didn't exist. So if you already have the, the you know, a presence of mind to be doing this and hit Confirming it, uh, you can actually hit Confirm it into Force Break Dandy into um, Crosswise. So it definitely takes some practice. I don't even know that I'll be able to do it, um, you know. I could probably just show it off of one. Wait, oh, I'm doing it backwards. Wait, am I doing it backwards? Wait, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So, yeah, so you can um you can hit confirm this um, into Force Break Dandy into Crosswise and get really nice conversions for 25% meter off of, you know, random... 5k 5k in spots where you wouldn't be able to get a, a big bang upper so um you know just something to look at because you were getting a lot of hits but you weren't really getting a lot of conversions and part of that is because you were using a ton of 5k so you know there's there's pros and cons 5k is a great button it has a lot of pros but one of the downsides is it's more limited in ways that you can get into um you know something like 2h or you know some way of getting into big bang upper to actually get substantial damage and and that's why this is like so good and he didn't have this in, in vanilla it's really um useful uh something so. that's also worth considering if you're like not super confident in your ability to juggle a character or something you can also just do fb dandy bunker it's not quite the same right. but it is a good grip and it is going to give you oki yeah that that's a great point yeah you don't have to do crosswise um, also, if they're crouching, I'm like I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure meterlessly you can just do regular dandy bunker. Because um, I think if they're five k, I'm pretty sure if they're crouching, you can do five k regular dandy bunker. I think that's. I think you're thinking of um, six h. I don't think that works off five k. I could be wrong. Uh, I mean, we could try to test it real quick. Um, I don't believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's too slow. I, I know on on a on 6k in, so in Exert, I think this is a little bit different. In Exert, this was crouching only. You do 6h into this, uh, but in this game, I think it's uh, even uh, standing if you're really close. Which this is going to be really hard because uh, you know you don't want to get throw. But yeah, so even just really close, that works on on 6h. But on on 5k, I I, I don't, maybe crouching counter hit. Um, Oh, it works on close S. So I think you can do 5K, 5S, and then bunker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Close slash for sure. So, yeah, one of the other classic combos, uh, we don't need crouching for this, is uh, close slash, far slash, close slash. Um, so this is a chain, and then you link another close slash. Um, I have to relearn the timing after having not done it in, like, 10 years. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, off of close slash, you can just do pile bunker. So yeah, cool. Anyway, we are getting a little in the weeds here. Do you have such uh, yeah, stuff for yeah, a Johnny yeah. friend? Yeah, just super quick. Uh, obviously, really good stuff. Uh, we'll be seeing you again soon. Uh, I would just say um, you were using 2D in your um, block strings a lot, uh, which is it's good. Uh, you were doing like a lot of 2K 2D coin. Uh, just be careful because um, if they get hit by it. Um, it's not as good as Exert, so, um, you know, like, be careful that you don't cancel into coin uh, when you don't need to, or, you know, that you don't do a mist fine or something like that. It was, I don't remember the specifics now, I'd have to go back and look at the match again, but it was getting you into a little bit of trouble. So you might want to experiment with some other strings besides 2K, 2D, um, or also look at, um, you know, canceling 2D differently and, you know, using maybe mist cancels more off 2D, stuff like that. Um, but, um, yeah, maybe more, you know, 2K close slash 5H, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, overall, fantastic stuff. Yeah, awesome.
Cool, I think with that, we are ready to go into our next one. You know what, Orion? I'm not going to tell you what this match is, because I want to see your immediate reaction when we go into it. Okay, well, I mean, Ken-esque we know is going to be Faust, right? It is. Let's see who his opponent will be. My god. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, We're I in see. it now. Welcome to Mario Party. How tough are you? I mean, this is going to be, uh... It's going to be interesting. Who, who's going to get the better items is going to be part of it for sure. But it's it's more about who's going to be able to keep track of both players' items, right? So, all right, so we got Azu in the blue. Going to have yeah, to keep track of the colors here. Mixing up their donuts and shit, it's going to get real confusing and gross. Yeah, it, it is very important that you track both players' uh, items. Because for those of you who don't know how, how items work, and it's a little bit, they changed it in Strive. I was about to say it's a little different. It's completely different, actually. Uh, Certain items, while they're out, he <laughs> tried to navigate away from the bomb. <laughs> uh, while the items up. are out, Faust cannot throw another one. So, you know, like, Bones was kind of joking, you know, losing track of whose donut was who, but um, that, that is like a real thing, because if you forget if it's your donut or theirs, that's the difference between can you throw an item or not. Yeah. So, it is pretty important. All of my jokes have a nugget of truth. I'll just never tell you what it is. <laughs> right, so, uh, Azu poisoned right now. Taking a ton of poison damage. Nice. The homie with the coverage here. Oh, yeah, actually hit his own bomb on the way down. That was nuts. Got the, wow, that was a... Very annoying here. Oh, he's going in. Oh, wow. Hit him with the going my way. Wow, tried to combo off of it. The 2k, I feel like Kenneth loves 2k in a way that, like, more so than most Fausts I've seen, and he's getting a lot of mileage out of it. Jump 2k? Or 2k? Yeah, uh, J2k, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, the thing is, it's such a good move that, it, you know, if you are learning Faust, I would recommend you overuse it rather than underuse it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it is just that strong of a move. Um, and, you know, the more you use it, the, the quicker you'll get comfortable with it, and you'll get a better feel for where it's good and where it's not. And also, something that we've talked about in... in previous tournaments is the different options out of it and getting comfortable with you know being able to react to how it's hitting are you hitting too high up did they block it in the air are you going to be safe are you going to be plus are you going to be unsafe and then canceling into going my way canceling into pogo not canceling it at all uh they all require different you know options hammer saved him there from the long range poke someone mentioned it earlier and i don't know if it was a joke but it's totally true faust has incredible tools at stopping faust right like in general it, it definitely is a little more chaotic when he has to deal with shit like that right like <laughs> who else in the cast can really punish him for doing jump back bomb bag from full screen no absolutely absolutely and and we talked about coward crouch earlier it's another matchup where the coward crouch is, is really useful it can go under the scalpel pull uh so you know there there's definitely uses of it uh for, for it in this matchup as well, in the mirror. Yeah, oh, getting doored. Wow, the mini Robokai didn't hit. Oh, it was <laughs> other person's Robokai, that's why. Brian, you're not allowed to call out the little the people anymore. Every time you call them out when they're running on the screen, they immediately hit them. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's my bad. Ooh, did not mean to TK that bomb bag. That was definitely supposed to be an item throw. But they both threw poison. A lot of uh, two H usage. Is going my way punishable? Uh, going my way. If if the whole thing happens, yes. If you land in the middle of it, it's plus. I hate that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can show that. I'll make a note. We'll, we'll talk about that after. Oh my God! There's a bomb in my delay. Oh! Oh, that's gonna hit. Oh my yeah, God! It hit, hit him too. Him. I think Kenneth thought he was out of range. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was also. Actually, yeah. I thought he was gonna get a huge conversion off of that. Oh, nice. Saw, saw that he was going over the scalpel pole and went with the force break. Very nice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. He licked the Robokai! Of... Dude, that's like licking a battery. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it is like licking a battery. Oh, nice. 6P. Beautiful. 6P in the bomb bag to eat the one hit. Again, a strategy we talk about. We, we've talked about it in previous tournaments against the bomb bag. And also, um, we talked about it against Justice. Very similar idea where you extend a hurt box into the projectile to make it blow up early. So yeah, Faust's uh, 6P is fantastic at that. And that's it. I was it. actually going to show that. That so was that, so fast. <laughs> so yeah, let me get into uh, Faust here. We'll look at a few things. That was so nutty. Oh my god. 
All right. So first, let, let me let me talk about your uh, your question from before. Let's talk about um, going my way. So um, so going my way. If you just look at the move, you see how it has this like U shaped arc. So if the whole move goes, there's a ton of recovery at the end. It actually has an FRC point at the end. Um, or actually, wait, is that only the Pogo version? Wait a minute, I didn't know that. Oh, only the Pogo version has an FRC. I didn't know that. I didn't know they were different. Learning. Um, yeah, there you go. I, I say this every time. I always learn something every one of these. So uh, I'm learning too. But um, but uh, yeah, so the Air version uh, doesn't have the FRC apparently, but um, they all have this like U shape. And so if the whole move goes, it, it is very unsafe because he goes up into the air and then you recover and he still has to come down and he has recovery. But um, if if he does it low to the ground and he lands like this at the bottom of the U, it is extremely plus, um, extremely plus. So um, you definitely, and that's why I was saying before, when you're talking about this, um, if you hit this too high, usually the way you correct it is by um, is by canceling into going my way. Uh, why am I getting H? So something like this to make you land, uh, you want to you want to make contact with them like that, and then you're going to be plus. Uh, but it's really important that you do this because if they block it, let me actually have them block high. Um, so because if if you hit this too high, give me one second, Ryan. Sorry, one second. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if this hits too high and you don't cancel it, it's going to be punishable on the way down. So so it's kind of on you to cancel it into something. And the nice thing is, if you cancel it into going my way, uh, you're going to be plus again. So. Um, just a really nice option. Now, if you hit this like really, really high, um, sometimes you have to wait to do going my way until you're lower. Otherwise, you would get the full U. And in those cases, sometimes you want to do Pogo instead. Uh, pogo is just like if you're not sure, you just do Pogo uh, because it's it's just always good on block, basically. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of everything about about Jump 2K. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a really interesting matchup. Uh, I talked a little bit about Power Kraut. Um, if, if you go back and you watch that match, it seemed like both of them had a little bit of uh, matchup experience in the mirror because both of them were using a ton of, uh, of 2H. And I, I would think that part of the reason for that is, you know, traditionally, uh, let me re roll this. Typically, um, R slash is kind of like the go to poke in most matchups, but you can coward crouch under this as well. So the coward crouch just kind of rebalances the. Uh, the wheel of options because you don't want to get your move power craft under and then whiff punished um, because you know these moves are great on block but if they whiff uh, they're pretty easy to whiff punish I, I think you can do 2s here yeah so um so you know it's just really interesting because this matchup like a lot of mirrors but I think people don't really appreciate that that it it, it, it is its own matchup that you have to uh you know play the matchup and, and it does change a lot of things uh you know depending on what you know so um can oh yeah 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 uh freddie thank you i was gonna mention that as well yeah so in this matchup so the one of the weaknesses of jump 2k in in all matchups is low profile moves so like eno can stroke the big tree soul can sweep it venom can sweep it uh, all these like low profile moves and this is another thing that you can just neutralize completely by just coward crouching. This is a really, really important thing in the matchup. So talking about things that, that are coward crouchable, this is the most important one. Um, because as we saw in that matchup, uh, and in, in all matchups, you know, Jump 2K is just an amazing, amazing move. So being able to, you know, make it whiff and then and then punish. Now this does require some practice because if you try to punish too soon, as soon as you hit a button, you're gonna hit yourself. So you have to time it so that they've landed and it's like fully recovered. Um, but but uh, yeah, really, really important uh, aspect of matchup. Other than that, I think you guys played played really well. Um, you know, did a, did a reasonably <laughs> better job maybe than me. I was losing track of whose items were who. You guys were doing a really good job tracking the items. Mm -hmm. um, you know, avoiding the bombs, stuff like that. So um, yeah, just a really fun match. Great job. Yeah, that was fantastic. You know, it didn't occur to me that if we have a mirror match, your uh, analysis is shorter. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it isn't. It isn't because in this case, I talked a lot about. Faust and mirror match stuff, so, you yeah, know. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, it's interesting what you were saying. Also, we're good to go whenever our players are ready here, but I, I was just talking to someone about the mirror match, right? Because, uh, just it, as a fighting game concept, because a lot of, I think it's a very natural, inherent thing to think, like, it's the mirror match, right? Like, the ultimate test yeah. of skill. Let's see who's the better Faust, right? But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's another character you have to fight. It's really not like that, and it's like, 
a lot of times there's weird, like you were just going over, right? There's weird specific knowledge that needs you need to know for fighting your own character that you might not think of, right? No, absolutely. And even to take it one step further, I think a lot of people neglect it as a matchup. They just think, well, I know everything about the character, so yeah. I'm going to know how to fight it. But that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, you might know what the character does in most matchups, but how your moves interact with your own moves is not something that you can just, you know, imagine. You you have to experience that and understand how the moves interact with each other. So you have to treat it like its own matchup. It, it's just like any other matchup that you have to learn. So. Yeah, and we are getting uh, George WT back here, if you recall. Uh, we saw them very early on. What a schmix. Immediately Sable doing the dirty Zappa stuff. Yeah, and a nice little conversion with the Ghost as well. You know, George WT brought a dolphin, but Sable brought three dead homies and a dog. So, I mean, this is ultimately, uh, I'm not sure this is balanced. Oh. Wow, okay, so I'm loving what I'm seeing right now, because George clearly has some experience against Zappa, because uh, George blocked that uh, dog overhead on the first try, which I would not have expected. Um, just, you know, I feel like Zappa, I think we've talked about this before, Zappa's just not really as represented as you'd expect for how strong of a character he is, right? Yeah. So... I feel like it's it's the type of character that a lot of people don't have experience against. They Ooh. know he's strong, but they don't they yeah. don't you know know all the all the little details. I love how you're saying that Sable might straight up die here. He's close to stun. Good dead angle. Oh, that's gonna hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit, dude. <laughs> that, that whale comes. It doesn't matter which way she's facing. It comes from off screen. <laughs> that was amazing. He was committed to the schmix. Yeah, George may be more familiar with this matchup uh, than I had thought. Love the. D hoop to, to lock him down after the knockdown. Now has Sword in contention. A lot of people say that's uh, Sword Zappa. M might be the big one. Might be the big. You look at a tier list and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's up there. <laughs> oh, nice. Getting around the Sword. Get in there. Yeah, there you go. Vertical Dolphin. Great answer for that situation. Yeah, George, I think, definitely looks comfortable in this matchup. Again, right, got a little crossed stuff. up there by the Ghost. So it's just one thing to point out that that uh, Sable did there for the people watching. Very subtle. In in that air combo uh, with the ghosts, uh, for the double jump, uh, Sable neutral jumped. And that's because at the end of that combo, you don't want to be close to the opponent. You want to go back to zoning with the ghosts. You don't really get great Oki. So just a, an interesting little tidbit there, uh, you know, for, for any other Zappa players that might be watching. As Rao! Oh, man, that was that's such a clean a, conversion. Yeah, that's Rao, and that's the round. <laughs> As is often the time when Rao makes an appearance. Yes. Uh, again, that mixed up. So watch the neutral jump here. Oh, that that time they, they forward jumped maybe because they were a little too far. But um, yeah, very very typical to see a neutral jump in those in the, those uh, ghost combos. Golf ball, yeah. Still got the hit though. Oh yeah, that was an awkward spot on the screen to get a conversion off of overhead kiss. This looks much more standard. Yeah. Watch for the summon. Yeah, there it is. Oh, sword! Whoa. Oh, the active frames of the 2D. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna reach, but the dolphin gonna get the last word in there. Yeah, and getting hit by that super sucks beans, because that gives Zappa a lot of uh, the orbs. Mm -hmm. Nice RC! Oh, nice! Got past the sword with the horizontal dolphin. Dog out right now. Oh, I think Sable tried to run up and summon, but the dog was behind. Um, so, so got 6p instead. That's a pretty common Zappa mistake. Interesting, interesting. I'm glad you're here, because to be entirely honest, I don't have too much knowledge of Zappa. Like you're saying, he's pretty rare. Like, it's, uh, just in the time I played this game, I barely fought any Zappas, so, like, uh, and he's a character that has so much unique, weird stuff. All I know is dog, sword, and then when Rao appears, you say GG's and <laughs> leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's funny because I, I think he's, again, he's one of those characters where he's not that easy to play. So even though he's strong, uh, there's not that many people that play him. And I also would suspect that he's the type of character that if somebody is playing him, they're probably pretty good. I would expect that, you know, uh, there's not that many beginners playing this character just because he does take a, a bit of work. So, you know. Goes again. There's that cross up. Okay, but George blocks it this time. It's unclear whether that crossed up actually. Air throw goes. There's the cross up again. Oh wow, the super actually neutralized the uh, hoop dolphin. Like, oh, oh, man. Nice with punish. Yeah, that was actually sick. George, the awareness. Right into the whale. 
I wonder oh. if that was a burst bait from George. Yeah, maybe. FRC nice. on the sword. FRC trying to get the kill just short. Oh, it's get too him high up. Horizontal dolphin. Oh, waited too long. Waited too long. Waited too long. So what, once once uh, Sable after that combo was over, they 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 tried to protect against the forward tech and did another two H with the sword and sent the sword up higher. Yeah. As soon as you saw that, uh, that should have been the cue to move forward on the ground because uh, Zappo was kind of leaving himself open in that area. Yeah, the sword's goofy, right? Because it kind of hangs out where it is, and Zappa needs to do really specific stuff to, like, get it back in a favorable Yeah, to position. maneuver it. Yeah. And interestingly, I've, I haven't really spent any time thinking about this matchup until now, uh, since I don't play either of these characters, but I think May actually probably has some pretty good options um, because of the dolphins, you know, horizontal and vertical, to maneuver around the sword. She has pretty good mobility. Oh, that's going to hit. That's going to hit. Big, big hit. Time. Okay, oh, that's going to hit. One one good wake up deserves another, right? That's punishable. Oh no. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about that. That that's important. We we didn't yeah. see that come up too much because most of the raw summons were hitting, but uh, we definitely need to talk about that. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that oh uh, Ryan, before you get into your real for real analysis here, one question I had for you, mm -hmm. which I think is something we haven't talked about much, and we saw it happen like twice there. Uh, what's the deal with wake up gold bursts? Uh oh yeah, I had written that down earlier and we didn't look at it. So um. So, Gold Burst is invincible on frame one, so it's like a universal DP, basically. Uh, obviously, you can only do it once until you build your burst back, but it is invincible. Uh, however, it is only strike invincible, uh, but unlike a blue burst, so a blue burst is strike invincible on startup, and then uh, after that, the hitbox of it, after the active frames, uh, it becomes, it just loses the invincibility, and it's just, you know, you're vulnerable. Gold Burst is Strike Invincible until you land. Literally until you land. So it is impossible to punish with a physical hit. So you could be... Let me see if I can show this here. Um, I'll do this. Okay. Uh, actually, let me do that one more time. I'm going to block. So I'm holding block so that I block as soon as I land. So I'm going to do that again. I'll play that back. And watch as my hitboxes just uh, completely go through Zappa. So hopefully this is emphasizing what I'm describing here, where he's just invincible the whole way down. So if you see somebody gold burst by mistake, which every now and then people do that kind of thing, uh, where they'll accidentally burst really high up in the air, it's hard. You have to train yourself to not instinctually just try to hit them because you will whiff. It is impossible to punish. Even if you do something meaty as they land, if they're holding block, they can just block. Or if you're really close and they try to throw you, they can throw you on the first frame. So it's actually impossible to hit them physically. But what you can do is throw them. So although it is strike invuln the entire time, it has no throw invulnerability at any point. So on the whole way down, it is still throw invulnerable. So it takes a little bit of practice to have the awareness to react, you know, with with an air throw in these kind of spots. But uh, that's that's what you need to do to, to punish. It's the only thing you can do. So yeah, does that answer your question there, Bones? Yeah, 100%. Uh, the, the one thing I was specifically uh, thinking about, it, that actually I don't super know, because you see people do a lot of wake up gold burst. Is that like hard to time? Uh, Comparative yeah, to like well, doing a wake up blue burst? Uh, well, yeah, so it, it's as if you're doing a reversal, basically. So when you get knocked down, uh, let me let me record this. So when you get knocked down, you can burst at any point, uh, but while you're in the OTG state, uh, you're, you're just going to get a, a blue burst. And actually, you can't burst at any time. I shouldn't have said any time. Once you've ended your, like, you can burst while you're in the OTG state. So so you know how Zappa can do, you know, something like this to OTG yeah. you? Anytime you're otg -able, you can you can burst. So, but once you get into the knockdown animation where you're now invulnerable, uh, you can't burst anymore. But on the first frame, if you, if you burst on the first frame of your wake up, uh, it's as if you did a reversal. It's just going to be invulnerable on frame one. Uh, you know, strike invulnerable on frame one. And it's it's the same kind of reversal timing. Uh, I always forget the windows in this game because Venom doesn't have a reversal, so it doesn't matter to me. But um, I think it's like two frames or something for a reversal, for, for a reversal special. Uh, I, I think burst is probably a one frame timing. I don't it, I don't think it's classified as a special like that where you get the, the buffer window. Uh -huh. um, so I think it is just like a one frame timing. But the nice thing is you can almost option selected by holding down back because that what you're doing with the stick while you hit burst does not matter so on your wake up you can hold down back and then try to time it and worst case scenario is if you if you're a little late you would block if they did a meaty and then get a blue burst which obviously is not as good it's not really what you want 
but um, at least you're not going to get hit or something like that, you know? Oh, all right. Well, that's good to know. You know, sometimes I have to play dumb on commentary, Ryan. And by that, I mean, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. So, um, so just real quick, um, good stuff from, from both players. Uh, George, you know, we saw before, so I'm, I'm going to uh, go a little bit uh, light here, but um, we got to talk about um, punishes and this is this is just a, a, a Zappa thing universally so not trying to pick on you this is for everybody it's it's this is to me one of the most important things about fighting Zappa is um, punishing this move it, it is not the easiest thing to punish um, but it is very important that when you can you do um, and so you, you really got to go into training mode with your character and uh, and see what your punish is and see if you have a punish that punishes at all ranges so let's look at May here for a second, because I have no idea for May. I'm, I'm thinking maybe, um, oh, I know what's happening here. Let me take this off. Uh, I need all the book though. Um, so I would think maybe something like 5K. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, oh, I didn't block after it. Sorry, give me one more second. Let's block. So the reason that this is so important to punish is because you do not want to let him do this for free because this is this is essentially the same as if soul ran up to you and did a volcanic viper and you just didn't punish that that's essentially what is happening here uh this, this move for those that are not familiar with zappa this is this is a dragon punch it is invulnerable startup um and the thing is it's really high reward because it knocks you down and it gives him a summon and so the thing is in neutral when he doesn't have a summon sometimes they will just gamble with this they'll just literally run up to you and just do it like straight up just run up to you and, and do it because it's going to go through um you know if you try to stop him from running up to you um it's just going to stop you know whatever you know whatever you tried to do do i have a no, what's here? um it's going to stop whatever you try to do um to stop him from running up to you so it's very important that you don't let him get away with this and another common thing is you'll see them do bar slash and then run up and summon because if this hits you it staggers you uh, oh right, it, it knocks you down in this game, um, and uh, and then you you get OTG summon. So that's like a very common sequence, and so you don't want to let him do this for free. Um, it's just really really important that you punish this because not not only are you getting some damage in, you're also removing the summon because as soon as you hit him, the summon goes away, and that's the most important thing. Because he if he's doing stuff like that, it's because he wants to get a summon out to make himself a little bit stronger. So you really need to not let him get away with that. It's like the most crucial thing in the matchup, in my opinion. Um, awesome. but yeah, other than that, um, good stuff. I know we've been, we've been going for a while. We got our next players lined up, uh, Sable, I didn't really get to you, but I think we're going to see more of you <laughs> shortly. So we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit more, but overall you were doing really nice stuff. So Yo, yeah, let's get into the next one here. It's going to be shadow fury versus Kenesk, who we've seen a lot tonight on stream. Kenesk is probably going to be repping the Faust unless they bring out, you know, secret pocket, uh, Bridget. I'm trying to think of the polar opposite of Faust. I feel like Bridget's the like opposite of the whole cast, almost. It's, like, <laughs> hard for me to imagine that. But, uh, Shadow Fury is going to be going with Milia. Okay. Another Milia. This is indeed the beginner tourney. I mean, Milia's just a fun character, right? If, if you like Rushdown, if that's kind of the archetype you identify with the most, what better character than Milia, you know? Yeah, thousand percent. And you know, with a name like Shadow Fury, I think they're a man who may like some violence. Alright, so a little bit of a good start here from Kenesk, but kind of in a bad spot here in the corner. Oh, missed. I D, maybe trying to force break disc? Oh, oh, oh my. Maybe trying to force force break Secret Garden, maybe. I didn't know Bomb Bag would get popped by the Secret Garden. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a projectile. So e each time the Secret Garden moves, every movement is like one projectile. So, um, yeah, it'll trade with with other projectiles. Ooh, the sweep is a little ambitious there from from Kenesk. Oh, oh, missed the punish. Unsure how to punish. That move has like two full seconds of recovery or something. You can kind of do whatever you want. Nice 5k. Kenesk has overall been very, very good at the air checks, which is a super important skill in this game, obviously. Oh, absolutely, and especially in this matchup. So when, when I mentioned earlier in that round that the 2D was a little ambitious, uh, I would be much more willing to wager on stuff like random 5k, random 6p, 
before I start doing stuff like random 2D when you're as far as like trying to control space. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's much more likely that you're gonna hit Milia with something in the air than on the ground. Yeah. Burst whiffing. I think that's like uh, that's almost like the you know if learning a matchup is like building a building, it's like the foundation, right? It's just like in yeah. general, what do you do to control space? Because it's like usually characters fall into buckets of how they typically approach, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a great way to look at it, yeah. Just kind of knowing what you're... See, like, right there, just a, a random 5K hit her out of the force break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, levels, you know, being, you know, playing at level 1, playing at level 2, you know, adapting your strategy. Again, like what you're saying, I would I, if I was a Faust going into this matchup, my level 1 would be controlling the air. And, and, and you know, if you can get the Milia to a point where you need to reassess and, and start controlling the ground more... To me, that's already a victory, because if Faust can fight her on the ground, you know, that's not going to go well for her. So, yeah, it, it is a uh, uh, random aside just talking about Faust. It was funny because someone the other day was like, hey, I'm looking to pick up, uh, you know, some Street Fighter. Like, who's similar to Faust? And we were like, what do you like about Faust? And he was like, well, I like that he can uh, zone. He's got fantastic mid screen pokes. He does great damage, <laughs> great close range. He has pokes. good mix up. <laughs> it's yeah. like, OK, yeah, like so Faust. Is one of those characters who's more beneficial at like oh chocolate, um you know he can definitely like he's very strong at that longer range game but like he is very adaptable right? No definitely definitely. Wow, <laughs> uh, Shadow Fury is just getting really unlucky with some of these force breaks. Just getting hit out of last round we saw by a random five K right there getting hit out of the force break with a with a burst. Out of a set oh a little bit of a drop. So one thing, uh, I'll reiterate it after, but just since it's on my mind now, again, I, I like what, what uh, Kenesk is doing, controlling the air using a ton of 5k. I think 5k is a great button. I would love to see mixed in also a little bit more 2k um, as a, just an alternative, you know, controlling a little bit of a different area for when Millie is coming down more vertically on top of him as opposed to approaching like with an air dash or something like that. Ryan, I'm not sure if this is a bad take, so tell me if I'm wrong. Is It seems like FDing Faust 2K is almost not a wonderful idea, because it, like, it it kind of pulls you in even when you're FDing it, and it's like Faust still gets his follow-up pressure after, it feels like. Um, no, I, th I think, um, honestly, in general, I, I do recommend basically always following Faust 2K. Um, because the thing is, it's, like, plus on block, and if you don't follow it, you kind of are left in this mix up between his command grab and something like 2p or 5p um whereas if you follow it you you basically break that up and remove all of his mix up options you know except for the easy ones like you know 6k and 5d and stuff like that so um uh, in general as a rule of thumb i actually do recommend following 2k hey all right you know that's why i asked <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I mean it's it's a reasonable. I I I know like kind of what you're saying. It's a, it it makes sense, but I think the the vacuum aspect of it is maybe uh, less extreme than than the way you're envisioning it. Wow, that super just beat. Yeah. Uh, the, the I I knew that it was gonna hit the scalpel pull, but I thought because of the extended hurt box, the first one would hit and then he would recover in time to block the second one. But uh, unfortunately for Kenesk, it just didn't work out that way. Yeah, because I it, it counter hit him right. I didn't realize that was in counter hit stayed that long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think it's counter hit recovery scalpel pull, but, uh, the startup for sure. I don't think it is based on your whiff punishing testing earlier, right? Like, that wasn't counter Exactly. Though. Exactly. Nice little hit into going my way. Okay, I like that burst a lot. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. And that, that was a, a good spot to 2k also, where you're not really sure where she's going to be. Because it's just kind of like, you know, it doesn't cover, like the spot that 5k covers, 5k covers it better. But 2k covers a more general area. I straight up don't know when he got that bomb out. Like I did, it just like landed behind <laughs> him and I was like, what? Yeah, I mean, to me, that that's a that's a sign of like a, a good Faust player is in these kind of matchups where you're just being smothered. They still find time to get a couple items out here and there. Oh, and speaking of items... Here he comes. Oh my god, and the bomb. All right. <laughs> you know what? Shadow Fury's yeah, he playing just this chill. perfectly. <laughs> yeah, just chill by the Potemkin. Uh, that's unfortunately through, through the chocolate. Oh, nice try to pick up off that. Pick up off that? Oh, didn't try that time. That's gonna hit. Yeah. You know, 
Really important observation. I only just now noticed that Faust says going my way. Oh, that he says it? Yeah. Did you say? He goes, yeah, yeah. Oh, me meteors. What? The meteors didn't hit! Dude, we went into space and everything. You think it would be right yeah. there? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he definitely says it. Uh, yeah. I never noticed it. He says it in his, in his weird Faust voice, but yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Ooh, oh, what? Oh, it didn't That's mess it up. That's <laughs> Yeah. As long as it hits late enough, it'll still have enough hits done. He oh, actually nice pick up. 2 k the wrong way. He was going into the corner. <laughs> yeah. Nice block, and I like the dead angle. Oh, oh no. no! Disc, yeah. Okay, pick up. Oh, good try. Oh, oh the scalpel pull chip. Oh, okay, the overhead. Okay. Last round, Ryan. Yeah, last round. This is back and forth. This is going nuts. You know what's weird? I, I, I could be wrong. I feel like that was literally like the first meteor Kenneth has pulled the entire turn. Like, yeah, you've never no, seen I, it. I think so. Okay, oh, great. yeah, you can't burst that. Great reaction to punish, too. Oh, oh no! Fire. I was gonna say this is looking really good for Kenneth. Oh no, no oh, flower? Didn't do the flower! Wait, what? Punish? No! Oh. Wait, whoa! Oh, it didn't What's it gonna list. be? What's it gonna be? He's dead! <laughs> Actually, I guess it wasn't even an issue of fall thing. I think it's a low. Maybe he was blocking a high? Or maybe maybe he hit a button on the way down? I don't know what happened there, but um, that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> he ended that like a real Faust player. <laughs> Shooting it to chance instead of taking the guarantee. So, uh, yeah, that was a great match. Um, I, I think I'm going to pass on going to training mode on this one. We spent a lot of time in the last ones. I'll just sure. talk for a minute. Um, right. And especially because we, we've seen Kennis a few times now, and, and uh, you know, Kennis just won. So, mm -hmm. um, But um, for Shadow Fury, good good stuff. Um, I think, um, I don't know if it was just Faust's weird uh, hurt box or, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe some nerves or something. I, I don't know, but... Um, I would say that the number one thing that you were missing was just, we talk a lot about the, the, the game plan, the flow chart. You were getting some hits and just the, the flow chart was failing. You were either dropping conversions and not getting knockdowns or, um, you know, the Oki wasn't quite there. A couple times you, you, um, you know, you got a sweep. Actually, we, we can look at one thing actually, because I, I, I want to look at this myself um, because I want to make sure before I say this, that this is not an exert only thing. I, I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's real in this game also, but just to be sure. Uh, let's look at million Millia here. Oh, wait, are we going in? Yeah, I'm going to go in for just a second. All right. So um, I need to know how to do... Nope, not those moves. There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is real um, in this game. So in, in Exert, it was very common to see this into this. Um, so the reason I'm bringing this up is um, I just wanted to make sure that this was... Um, still meaty in this game which it looks like it is let me actually double check uh, well it the disc is not meaty but you can meaty so really what i should be doing is, is this um although i don't think i did that very well yeah there we go there we go that was perfect okay so let's see so can i hold up here no yeah, so, okay, so there were a lot of, um, I just wanted to make sure that that was the same as Exert. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is because you were getting a, a pretty good amount, there was at least two, maybe three times, when you got stuff like this, um, and you got a knockdown, and then you did this to try to get Oki, and this is, you know, using four strike disc like that is a good way to fix weird knockdowns, but this isn't really a weird knockdown. This should be pretty stable as far as, like, Millie is concerned. Obviously, there's sometimes when you want to force break disc anyway, um, just because it, it gives you better coverage because it's multiple hits. So, you know, if it's like a round ending situation, you're not trying to conserve meter. You just want the best version of the disc possible. But in general, when you hit stuff like this, um, uh, if you want to make it easy on yourself to get Oki, just do this um, and then you can still meaty them. And so rather than try to, you know, run up and do this, which this is also possible, um, but, um, it can be a little tricky if you're still getting comfortable, you know, with the controls and doing a dashing disc and stuff like that. Um, it can be a little bit trickier, so you can make it easier on yourself by just canceling into the command roll and then doing H disc. The, the one thing, like you saw a, a few seconds ago, if you're too close, you will cross up. So you need to be aware of that. 
So, um, yeah. what's the gap after meaty 2K disc hit 6K? I, I don't know. I'm not going to try to look at that. <laughs> um, that's that's a that's a question for a real Milia player, um, and I don't want to spend too much time here. But I just wanted to bring that up because that's it's pretty important because you were you were losing a lot of opportunities because of that, and it's it should have been a, a really you know when you hit a, a sweep with Milia, it's time to start the party, you know, and that's really not what we were seeing. So, other than that, though. Um, good stuff. You know, your your approaches yeah. were, were right on. The other thing maybe is to practice with pin a little bit. Maybe just go into training mode and just practice moving around and aiming pin. It is like a, you know, like a sniper rifle. Uh, it's pretty precise, uh, especially with the, the three different versions in this game. So, you know, get get really comfortable with that uh, so that you can really, you know, leverage that to help you get in in matchups like like Faust where you're going to struggle a little bit against the anti -ears. So the, the one thing, Ryan, I just want to point out, someone in chat said that only 2S and 2K are meaty after that option. Overhead option is like bad mood or not. Yeah, and, and that and that's, that's a good thing to know uh, from both sides as the Milia player and as the opponent. But uh, I, I don't want anybody to read that and, and think, you know, read too much into that. Mm -hmm. Um, it is important to know, and there is something to that 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 fact, but it's not like that really diminishes, um, you know, the, the 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 setup of it too too much. As long as you can meet you with something, uh, in theory, you will be able to train the opponent to, um, you know, respect that meaty, and then that opens you up to do non meaty things like like the overheads and stuff like that. So, yeah, hundred percent, I agree. But it is good to know. Cool. Then with that, I would say that we're ready for our next one, but I think we are waiting for Hyper Heiko to join back in. May have to remake the lobby. You know how uh, they go through your lobbies, B. I mean, they've been good so far tonight, so I don't even want to. You know what? They're anything. the best, Ryan. This is the most stable video game, yeah. and I've, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so we're gonna see if Hyper Heiko can't get back in here. If not, I'll remake it. But we, this is gonna be winners finals, which is nuts. Uh, it's gonna be Dimax Slayer versus Heiko Potemkin. Oh, he's back. All right, they're back. All right. Shoo. So whenever our players are ready here, we can get going. So Wait, who 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 is this uh, so I don't have to call them Serlin? <laughs> Dimax. Uh. <laughs> Look, I have no control over their Steam names. Please understand. <laughs> um, Steam names are the worst thing to ever happen to Guilty Gear. I agree. You know, ban them. Uh, so Dimax uh, is actually, as quick lore, Dimax is a pillar of the JoJo's community. Uh, so I think uh, them coming over here and picking them some Slayer surprises nobody. But uh, I want to hear your opinion on this, Ryan, because, uh, again, I'm a boomer. I'm ancient. Back in Accent Core, this was notoriously a terrible matchup for Slayer. Oh, yeah. Has that changed? Uh, I don't think so. And it's not its not just Accent Core. I mean, this matchup's also not great in uh, in Exord. Um, it's just, it's just a, an archetype matchup. You know, this is something that, you know... Uh, is a, a tale as old as time, you know, Abel versus Zangief, you know, any kind of any kind of ground based, you know, up close and personal character with no projectile versus Ooh. the grappler. It's just going to be tough. Yeah, 100 percent. And it's also it's a weird matchup that uh, stuff exactly like that was what I was going to say. Uh, the thing that can really mess up Slayer more specifically is the fact that Backdash beats so many of his options. He just doesn't have a lot of lingering hitboxes unless he commits. Yeah. Even there's not a lot of threat behind them. You know, I, I mentioned a little while earlier that there there's some kind of upside to the fact that Slayer's uh, strings and combos are almost like link timings, and in some cases are link timings, um, where you get some natural benefit to that by sometimes you just accidentally block bursts or block dead angles because you're waiting to do your next link. Uh, but in this case, it is it is a drawback for exactly what you're talking about, where you know you don't you don't you can't really throw out multiple successive hitboxes to cover something like Potemkin's backdash. So it is a little bit harder to deal with stuff like that. Oh, that's Oh, he went back into Gigantor? Okay, but he was far enough away, and this is looking all Dimax. He's... But even then, you saw he tried to specifically call out his backdash by doing the, the two-hit dandy follow-up, and it still whiffed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, this is so close. Oh my god, you should have just let it rip. Oh my, that's Oh, close. the sweep. Tough break. Tough break. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the the other aspect of the matchup, I think, besides Potemkin's backdash, like like we've been talking about, is the fact that so many um, things, both once you backdash them, but also just in general, uh, are are pot busterable, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, blocking pile bunker and you know stuff like that. Um, it's just like layup, 
lay up uh, pod busters in a lot of cases. So yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. I will say one point in Slayer's favor is Slayer is stuff like that. Slayer's a lot more score. Gotta be kidding me. Did that auto correct it? Did he input it the other way? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, the range on that. Jeez, that Louise. was so far. <laughs> Hello? Homie, what's happening? How, what are these pot busters? Uh, okay, that one. <laughs> this yeah, that one was that was for the rubbins because I mean he has like one percent HP. That was brutal. That one was that one was for the for the meme for sure. <laughs> you know, if you're not playing pot for the memes, Ryan, why are you playing? Uh, but that was one one advantage Slayer has is he is considerably more squirmy than the rest of the cast. Uh, mm -hmm. Just so he can be a little harder to pin down. So he can find his way out of Potemkin pressure sometimes. But that, I feel like, was an auto-corrected dandy step. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And that, and it's another example of uh, what what could have been a free pop buster as well after you block the BBU. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ow. You know, FB Bunker is a great meter use in this matchup because it's not pop busterable. <laughs> Nice. Don't say nice, nice Ryan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, tried. That's supposed to be 5H, I think, into... Oh, oh, oh! Okay. You know? That's not that's not biased oh. commentary. <laughs> uh, oh, that is unfortunate. You know? A bit of a scramble there at the end. What's funny is those 6Ks into each other wasn't weird disrespect. That was just, he no, was yeah. trying really hard not to get really pot busted, and it is invul and also plus. <laughs> yeah. So I totally agree with that. I would have loved to see like three 6Ks, and then on the fourth one, 6K hold into throw or into low. Exactly. Dimax types in the chat, I need an adult. You know, Dimax, I don't know if we can get one to you in time, so I hope you can navigate your way out. We're going into potentially the last game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is just rough. Dimax bet on his opponent. <laughs> oh, Buster! I, I think that's called rigging. That's like, uh... What, what's what's the phrase for that? It's like in, in, insider betting or whatever. Yeah, but we're not very regulated here on Twitch. You can do whatever you want, but that's... <laughs> Is that Ooh, collusion? Ooh, slide head. Maybe. Ooh, slide head again. Oh! Okay. Good read. Oh, he's Lost. missing the 5H. Yeah, that's actually a little bit too far. Get out of there. Okay, or go in there. Oh, yeah, well... That's actually, because Slayer is weirdly not that plus after Mappa hits, so that pop buster is actually probably pretty hard for him to contend. Yeah, yeah, and th that's what I was saying before, like, Potbuster is just a, a constant annoyance anytime Slayer gets in. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god, that, that must have been the tippity tip of that hitbox. <laughs> like... Ooh, nice. Okay. Okay. Good. Get out of there, yeah. Uh-oh. Maybe missed a backdash. Yeah, he's getting hit meaty. Oh! Okay. That was definitely supposed to be a Potbuster, and he got 6P. Oh, unfortunate. Oh. Okay. Okay, gonna be able to get the quick conversion here. The JD, I love it. Oh. Man. Okay, gold burst. Whoa, Got him. That's a lot of damage. Got him. That's a lot of damage. Unburstable. Oh, no. Needs another hit. Oh, too high. Oh, my God. Why did he <laughs> helicopter straight into Potemkin's arms? Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, something tells me he did not mean to do that like that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's look at a couple things. Why are you on the SS Potbuster Express? I uh, I was suddenly reminded of something that I have not thought about in a million years. That I have no idea if it still works. And I don't know that I remember exactly how to do it. Uh, see something? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna remember this. Um. Okay, yeah, forget this. Uh, I don't think I can show this. There was like a crazy mix-up you used to be able to do where you would do like a rising jump D. Wait, was it? Maybe it wasn't canceled. Let me see one more thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I remember how to do this. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, it's just a tough matchup. Um, I don't even know, honestly, what to recommend. I, I think what I feel, what, what I feel like I see usually in this matchup is a ton of patience from Slayer. You really just can't afford to throw yourself at, at Potemkin like you would in, in some other matchups. Um, and if you're really patient and they start doing slide head, you can do like BDC Mappa 
to punish Slidehead and get in safely. Um, obviously, that takes a little bit of practice. You have to learn how to do the EDC mappa. But um, yeah, th this matchup just requires a lot of patience. Um, you can do some IADs every now and then, but you don't want to get blown up by 6P. Just really, he has good answers for all your approaches, honestly. Um, and then once you get in, you really have to be like, um, kind of like hit and run. You kind of have to just like do what you want to do and then get out of there and not linger in a in kind of like a state where, you know, you're trying to frame trap him or, you know, wait to do something. You just want to like do what you're trying to do. And if it doesn't work, just get out of there. Um, so someone said it's like Balrog versus Geef. It's old Balrog versus Geef. I don't know if you've kept yeah. up with Street Fighter V. Geef hates Balrog now. <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah, uh, a good attempt. Maybe you can get the run back, but um, yeah, honestly, not too much I can say about that. It's it's just a tough matchup. Um, you know, you had the the right idea, um, trying to trying to make it work. Obviously, some of your conversions, like what I was just looking at in the corner, you had a couple of opportunities where you were hitting like DPUs and you were just doing like immediate knockdowns. Obviously, there's some better combos you could be doing. Um, I don't know what they are, uh, especially against Potemkin, because I'm pretty sure there's a ton of. Potemkin specific combos you can do. You were doing like some of the heavyweight stuff where you, you catch them with uh, 5H, 2H. I know that's like heavy characters only or whatever. Um, but uh, you know, you could have been getting a little more. I think the main problem was that when you were, it's not so much that you were doing uh, shorter combos or weaker combos. The real problem was that because they were so short, this is giving you worse Oki um, because you're doing the rising jump D and then you still have to wait until you land. Um, so I would at least try to just figure out something that's a little bit more normalized, you know, something that um, lets you do a jump D on the way down so that you get better Oki, um, so you can be a little more comfortable actually mixing up Potemkin uh, on his wake up. Yeah, I mean, but, um, uh, again, also, if you're just trying to, like, because I, res I totally respect having just, like, the quick and dirty combo conversions that are consistent, right? Uh, like, a thousand percent. But I... If you're looking for better Oki, I want to say just out of Big Bang, doing 5H into uh, K Dandy P Bunker still gives you that hard mm -hmm. knockdown and is most of the damage, right? Probably does more damage right. than 2H JD, to be honest. Bunker is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Yeah, I would definitely look at, like, what gives you better Oki and try to find something that's a mix of something you're comfortable doing, but still gives you better Oki than just this immediate jump D, because this is basically, like, the worst Oki you're going to get. I mean, you still landed plenty of time to kind of do whatever you want, but, you know, part of Slayer's kind of, kind of what, a part of what makes his Oki good is when you can get a knockdown and you can start doing stuff like this because you have so much time on their wake up. So they don't know, you know, whether you backdash or forward dash, they don't know where you are, you know, you could do, you know, a third one if you want to get real cheeky. So, you know, um, when you, when you do stuff like this, you're just removing time from yourself. So you have less kind of uh, confusion factor with your, with your Oki. Um... But yeah, good stuff. Uh, obviously, we're going to see Heiko again, so we don't need to go too much. The, the one thing that I'll just say super quick is um, you were using Hammerfall a, a, a good amount, um, but I would love to see it a little bit more in your pressure. Um, so maybe just something to think about in your next couple of matches. If, I don't know if you have the muscle memory for that and you just don't do it that much, but um, you know, Hammerfall, uh, Hammerfall FRC especially is just um, it's, it's super, super powerful. So um, you, know, you were doing a lot of strings. You were catching... Um, Dimax a lot with the lows, both with, with meaty 5k and also with sweep after 2s, which is very powerful. But, um, you know, mixing up your, you know, rotating your options a little bit and using Hammerfall in your block strings, very, very powerful. So, yeah, 100%. And I think with that, we are ready to get into our next one, which is going to be a real funny match. You know, basically, what I feel like every tournament we like wind up with one main character, just somebody that we happen to have seen throughout like the whole tournament. <laughs> uh, and Kenesek is going to be stepping up here again, going up against Sable Zappa. Oh boy. This is a little goofy of a matchup. I feel like these are the two, like, you know, if there was like an alignment chart almost, these two are definitely the oddballs. Oh yeah, yeah. They are both on the chaotic side of the spectrum for sure. Yeah, and this is first uh, two, two two RNG characters. So sorry, where is this? This is loser semis. Loser semis. So this is uh, okay. a winner of this goes on to fight Dimax. Okay. So an important thing. What? So what we saw? Um, who was it? Uh, Kenesk versus um, Azu, the Faust Mirror. I mentioned a little bit how the um, low profile aspect of you know Faust Coward Crouch kind of changes your priority and which buttons you hit. That is 10 times more amplified in this matchup because Zappa has the same kind of properties just on his run forward. So certain pokes are just off the table, whereas in the Faust Mirror, 
you still use them, you just use them less. Yeah, yeah. But in this matchup, you just almost cannot use them. Things like Far Slash, uh, things like Poke or uh, Scalpel Pull, you, you can still use Scalpel Pull a little bit here and there, but in general, it is it is extremely risky because he could just run under it. Yeah, and you can see there, that is the power of the sword, because Sable literally full screen, and Faust, not like he has an option to immediately close that distance or anything, and was just getting so injured. Yeah, and we I'm going to make a note, even though that's pretty magic specific, we can talk about that a little bit as well, because there are other applications as well for, for that kind of tactic. Oh my god! This a punish, that looks like a hard burst bait. Ooh, hit himself, he didn't recover in time. Ryan, why does that burp blow out my speakers? Burp? The, the, the triple ghost burp. I don't know how you describe it, that's the noise it makes. Uh, I don't know what you're describing. Chad, are you with the... me on this? This exists, right? I'm not crazy? <laughs> when, when, it come, when it happens again, let me know. Because right. I'm not sure what you're describing. Are you talking about jump H, the little popping? The little explosion? That? I, I mean, I didn't hear. I'll, I'll, I'll scream when it happens, trust me. <laughs> oh, nice knockdown. Oh, the wake up. Oh my god, the wake up DP into Rao. Yeah, the double DP. <laughs> it was gonna take the quick first one. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The, the triple the triple projectile throw. Yeah, because they all make all the same noise the same and it just stacks because yeah, that's yeah. how Arx has coded their games to work for Yeah, exactly. Reason. It's because it makes the sound three times on top of itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always make the joke, and I'm actually not kidding when I say Venom Dark Angel blew out my TV in college's right speakers. Because somebody just got pressured in the corner too many times and FD'd too many Dark Angels. And that nice. literally just happened. <laughs> nice. I mean, that's just nostalgic to me. <laughs> that, that... Alright, so... Anyway, sorry, you go. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, um... Kenneth just having a, a tough time. The problem in this matchup, I think, uh, specifically, is just that this is one of those matchups where all of the summons are really good. You know, in, in some of the other matchups, um, some of the summons are, are are like actively bad for Zappa, where they just don't they just don't do enough, and the the opponent has easy ways to get around what that summon is trying to do. Whereas uh, in this matchup, they're just all good. Nice presence of mind. So. Before you were asking about going my way being punishable, uh, Kenneth, with the presence of mind there, realized that uh, it was going to be punishable in our seat. And there was a perfect example of running under scalpel yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. That's that low-profile stuff. You know, it, it's like it's like Soul can do that under a lot of moves sometimes, but Zappa's like that ten times, right? Like he's so oh, yeah, yeah. Low. Zappa, yeah, Zappa. It's like stroke the big tree running at you, basically. <laughs> it's like extremely, extremely low-profile. Ooh, hit this. Nice, one. meaty. All right, Kenneth, you know, that's, I feel like that's the resolve you need to have to win this because, like, Kenneth just took the couple of opportunities he had and is uh, generally playing really patient. Yeah, so Mini Faust is very good against Zappa because oh. he wants to stay on the ground. Yeah, and see, see, and that's exact. that was a perfect example of the kind of liability that something like Scalpel Pull can be. When, when Zappa doesn't have a summon, He's going to approach you. He wants to get a summon. I mean, he could just do full screen summon, in which case the scalpel pull, it may not even work, honestly. It could just trade uh, or clash, I guess would be the right word. Um, but uh, yeah, if he just starts running at you, which is probably the most common thing he's going to do at that range, you're just going to get punished. He's going to run all the way under scalpel pull. So you got to be really sure when you do it. Now a raw door. I feel like I've seen more raw doors from Kenneth than from like any other folks. Yeah, well, Force Break Door is a really, really good option in this matchup for getting summons knocked off of him. So if he has a particularly annoying summon that you want to get rid of, uh, it's just a good way to get a hit, because all you need is one hit. It doesn't matter that you don't get a conversion off of it. Rao about to expire here. Oh, the chip. Well, he, he got hit, but the chip was going to be a problem. Yeah, that was going to be a huge problem because he was actually just running out of meter. Sable is one round away, and as Curly points out, Sable is the one who sent Kenneth down into losers. So, you know, will we see the revenge comeback situation? Ooh, getting so sorted. Here. Oh, man. Tech forward. Yeah, get out of there. Beautiful. All right, I didn't have to show this end. That was exactly what I was going to show in training mode. So that, uh, I think actually Faust has, has one of the better answers to that situation with Sword than a lot of other characters because of how strong Force Break Pogo is. So really good uh, option choice there. Yeah, 100%. There's the Meteors. Sable blocking. Sable's an overall really Punish. Nice. 
Table's done a great job of identifying what Kenisk is doing at any time, whether it's what item he pulled or just like the air throws that deny the air, uh, because like you said, Zappa wants to be on the ground. It's been really good awareness from Sable. Yeah, I mean, once he has ghosts, he, he spends a lot of time in the air, but in general... Oh! Oh, he Wait. did not want that super. He had two mini oh Faust? God. Oh my god, that was so unfortunate. He did not mean to do that super. He got 5p into super, uh, and I'm pretty sure he was just trying to do the launch off of the scalpel pull. That was very unfortunate. Yeah, that was, that was a weird scrambly situation, unfortunately. Caught the wrong end of it. Was there stuff you want to show off here, Ryan? Um, I, I can show some stuff really quick. I don't think we need to go too deep into it. We can just kind of keep it moving. But I just want to show some examples very quickly. Um, I mean, it, it's probably pretty obvious after having talked about it during the match. But, you know, some of these buttons, again, it's like an exaggerated example of what we were talking about in the Faust Mirror, where, um, you know, just him running takes a bunch of tools off the table. So, you know, stuff like this, you just can't do. Um, so you really have to reevaluate your buttons. And in spots, for example, so, so like the thing is, is that this this button far slash is very core to what Faust wants to do. This is just like such an important button. So having it completely taken off the table is a problem. And so even though uh, like 2H, for example, is I don't want to say a worse version of far slash, but for just in terms of speed and space control, let's just generalize it as a worse version. It is better in some ways, but generally let's call it a worse version but this is so important that having it taken off the table is too much of a problem that you actually just need to start doing this instead um, because this he cannot run under this hits all the way to the ground so you, it's almost like you need to reprogram your brain when you're fighting zappa that in in the spots where your instinct is hit far slash you need to hit 2h instead and it's very similar with venom venom can't do far slash uh zappa can run under it you have to do 2s instead um so it's just that, that's part of what makes Zappa so powerful. You know, he just, just by running, he takes some of your tools off the table. So, um, you know, but but the, the good thing is that this is a very good tool against Zappa on the ground. So, you know, doing stuff like this, um, you know, with the reverse beats, um, or of course just canceling the item, um, these are all very good. But I would definitely really minimize how much you're using scalpel pull for the reasons that we saw multiple times where you got punished. So, and, and he kind of got off light. Uh, the punches could have been a lot worse too. So, um, but yeah, it's just uh, kind of kind of a big deal in the matchup. It's a matchup experience thing for sure. Yeah, and I almost just feel like even if you get off lightly with a punish, like getting stuck in that knockdown Oki situation against Zappa is just so bad that it's like, even if it's a gentle punish, if it leads into knockdown, it's like, this is the worst thing that could have happened, right? No, you're, you're exactly right. And the thing is like, when I say it's a light punish, I'm talking damage, but you're exactly right. It Just because it's light damage, it is a horrible, horrible position. If he just runs under scalpel pole and does nothing but summon to punish, you could lose the round off this. Like, I just got dog. Okay, you got knocked down by summon. I see I got dog. I jump over. And if you get hit by this cross-up, I'm going to infinite you. So it's like, you know, <laughs> directly the punish was very weak, but indirectly you could, like, lose the round off of that punish very easily. So, you know, it just... You, you don't want to get hit by... And that's why I was saying before in one of the previous matches, it is so important. And, and Kenneth did a pretty good job of punishing the summons on block. But that's why it's so important that you do, because if you just keep giving him, uh, if you just keep letting him off the hook with, with random summons, uh, it's such a good thing for him, because when they do hit, it's like, you know, we, we always talk about, like, the party starting, but it is like, you know, this is like a New Year's Eve, you know, party, <laughs> you know, kicking into full gear, because you could just, like, lose the round off of the one knockdown, so. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But big shout-out to Kenesk, making fourth here. Congratulations, you did get banned, and I think with that... We are ready to hop into our next one. Just kidding. Sable has is here. Dymax is rejoining. Uh, so whenever Dymax gets back in here, we should be able to go into our losers finals, which is really exciting. Very exciting. So this is going to be Slayer versus Zappa. So I mean, we can already just kind of preempt this. I, I feel like you know we 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 haven't really seen many Zappas. I, have we seen any Zappas in, in the previous tournaments? I feel like we haven't. Really. I, I feel like we have not. If it, if it was, it was, like, fast. I don't think they made it to, like, uh, top four or so. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm going to just keep emphasizing this this low-profile aspect of, of Zappa because I think for newer players, it's the most important thing to understand about your matchup against Zappa. 
And um, in this matchup, it's going to be same same thing. I mean, I keep even look at some stuff while we're waiting here because I'm I'm 99% sure he can run under Mappa, which is it's a pretty big problem. Mm. Um, All right, let me just hold on. I'm remaking the lobby real quick, you know, just to make sure that the the yings and the yangs here are perfectly balanced. Yeah. All right. Oh, he cannot run under Mappa. Oh no. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So that's good. That's good. That would be a huge problem. <laughs> uh, can he, I run, wasn't under, sure. can he I, run under 5k? I feel like he can't because 5k is pretty like low hitting, but I think he can. What? He does, yeah. No! Yeah. Right, never mind, Ryan, this is, is the it? worst. <laughs> I know, it's a problem. It's a it's a very real problem. Um But yeah, not being able to run under map is, is good though. Um that that would be that would be like a disaster. Cool. I think we're just about ready. Dimax versus Sable. Gonna be doing this here. Losers finals. So this is three out of five done. Three out of five. Yep. Hundred percent. I feel like I could be wrong, Ryan. But okay. Be with me on this, right? Slayer. I'm 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 going with you on this journey. Tell me. Slayer me has like a million powerful things, right? And he does like a billion damage. Mm -hmm. Dimax says he's in your lobby. I'm still connecting. I don't like that. That's curse energy. Yeah, right. that's not good. Hold on. We're going to remake it one more time then. And then we'll be good for real, for real. Okay. Slayer has a lot of really powerful stuff, right? Um, and he's got, like, invul despair. He's got damage. He's got pokes. He's got conversions. And I feel like there's so many matchups where it's like, uh, oh, yeah, Slayer is kind of miserable in this. And it's just, like, it's weird, right? Like, it, it feels like it's not really, it shouldn't really be a thing almost. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Slayer... I, I've always felt that Slayer was... I, well, I mean, so, you know, I, I kind of, like, quote-unquote, grew up with Slayer being the best character in the game in uh, Vanilla Accent Core. So, you know, my my opinion of Slayer has always been high. Even in, like, Eggard, I felt like he was a little bit underplayed. I felt like he was better than people made him out to be. Um, he just has, you know, enough tools, I think, that are universally good in, in basically any matchup. That uh, you know, you, you kind of the, the the floor on how bad he can be is is like pretty reasonably high. So um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, he certainly you know you have to certainly work. It's not like he's gonna do the work for you, but um, like you said, he hits hard. He's got good mix up. He's got you know good tools and stuff. And this game's got ridiculous reversals. So obviously that you know helps a lot. But um, yeah, I, I've always liked Slayer. Sorry, dealing with minor lobby technical difficulties in the background here. No problem, yeah, the prize no pool problem. is that everybody's banned. You know, as your reward for playing, you're not allowed to play again. Uh, right. Or gets a pool, yeah. You get one of those, um, one of those uh, inflatable hot tubs, so that you can become a streamer. <laughs> top top four gets a pool. <sighs> I hate that. <laughs> I was, um, whatchamacallit. You know what? I don't want to talk about it. We're going to go on here into <laughs> Losers Finals, which is going to be, for real, Sable and Dimax. Hopefully, if they're both in here, they can actually just hit the OK button, and then video games can be played. As you can see by this stream, they are both in here. Is... So whenever Dimax they're ready. Good. Oh no, Dimax is still not in your lobby. All right, Dimax is rebooting their game. I'll kick them from the lobby. Maybe, maybe it would be better if uh, if he hosted or if uh, Sable hosted, and then you join their lobby. Ooh, not a bad idea. Dimax, if you're still here, do you want to make the lobby, make it private, and DM me the link so I can join? You try that. I max bet on his opponent again. <laughs> so there's a fine line, Curly, between uh, collusion and being a realist. You know, sometimes you just gotta <laughs> you just gotta keep it real. You know, it's 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 um you know it's it's a good thing to be real with yourself. You know. Ah, uh, Dimax is here now. Sable's not. Can Sable get back in? <laughs> what is this musical chair shit? 
Dude, I'm about to ST Akuma Sable right now and just fight Dimax if this doesn't get resolved. Like, <laughs> I've had it up to here. No one wants to see a Slayer Mirror, though. <laughs> Boo! I think Slayer Mirrors are hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can, neither of you can hit each other. <laughs> yeah, Curly said this is like when you try to get a large group to go out to dinner. Yeah, it's like herding cats. Yeah, 100%. You know they, uh, they tested herding cats on Mythbusters, like for real? Were they able to do it? No. I would imagine they were not. <laughs> I uh, I was just watching a talk recently, and Adam Savage was mentioning that, like, you don't understand how, like, to their genetic core, cats do not want to listen to you. Yeah. It was real funny. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dimax, right, make the lobby. Have Dimax make a room. Have Dimax, Dimax make the lobby. We're done with this. Yeah. We've had it up to here. <laughs> We, we were so lucky the whole tournament. Yeah, I mean, we, we really can't complain. Everything's been going smooth so far. Man. Uh, it's crazy because it was only the last tournament when we had, like, all sorts of issues at the beginning with, like, my frame rate and, like, lobbies were dropping. And it was like that. that I don't know what it was. That one tournament was, like, cursed. Yeah, I don't know. My, my, my game kept crashing. Remember, my game was, like, crashing over and over every time I tried to stream it to you. Yeah, it's, uh, okay, wait. I think I got a link here. Can I join? Connecting, please wait a while. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. I'm in right. Dimax's room. I'm looking at David Solin right now. Yeah, y'all get any more of them lobby updates? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on. We can, we can, we can, we gotta, you know, we gotta appease it a little bit. So, like, chess 2 was good. Fantasy Strike is tight. Come on. We can do this. It's chess 2. Table really not join. Okay. Oh? Okay, I'm spectating. Sable, okay. hit the button. Immediately. Now, you have no time. Yes! Please, Praise right. Guilty Gear. We did it. All you had to right, do... Alright, finals. All you had to do was thank Serlin, Ryan. Was it so hard? Alright, losers finals. <laughs> Grand 5. <laughs> Slayer versus Zappa. <laughs> Sorry, this is why you don't give me this much dead air. De Slayer versus Zappa. <laughs> So, um, one thing that we didn't see too much against Faust, uh, that I think is probably going to be a little bit more useful for Sable here is Far Slash. Um, just creating a, you know, a puddle. It, 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 it's almost like a mini, like, Elfelt grenade, if you're familiar with Exerd, uh, where it's just going to create a little spot that Slayer's not going to be able to go through for a little while. Oh, but the sword is a nightmare for him right now. Please help. Get out of there. You gotta, you gotta get out of there. There it's, you go. It's kind of nuts to me how much that, like, cranks uh, Zappa's tension pulse. <laughs> like, mm. he, he was full screen, and the game was like, you're doing great. <laughs> like, I know it's a mechanic, but it feels bad. Okay. Oh, nice little reset. Oh, got oh. a little too ahead of yourself there. Boy, hit oh, look, boy. the wrist oh, be God. cranked. Get out of there. Oh, you're dead. You are ex what? what? Oh, oh <gasps> it was a counter hit. He didn't RC. Okay, it, the, the 5D was counter hit. Yeah, he actually could have just done 5D and not cancelled it into the uppercut, and it would have been unteckable because it was forced counter hit. But, uh, anyway. Banana peel, yeah, he didn't see it. Whoa. Banana peel waiting on the other side. What do you mean, Open banana version? peel? Huh? Caught the toes. No, I just, I didn't see it either. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That's really bad. So for those, again, who are unfamiliar with Zappa, we don't get, you know, that many Zappas on these tournaments. But um, when the Ghost projectile hits you, see how the Ghost is kind of lingering on Slayer right now? Uh, that means he's cursed. And for the duration that the Ghost is on him, which it's long, it's like 10 seconds or something, uh, the Ghost will just randomly spawn annoying projectiles like banana peels and golf balls and flower pots that fall from the sky. Um, and so it becomes... Be between the ghosts themselves being thrown and the random projectiles, it becomes incredibly annoying for a character like Slayer to navigate to get a hit on, on Zappa. Yeah, and Sable gets the clean pressure there. Dimax, I think, not super like familiar with how he can get out of that. Just trying to block it out. You know, yeah, and again, this this is where Slayer, you know, you gotta you gotta go with those really good reversals, either force break dandy or just backdash jump or something like that. You have to believe in your heart. All Slayer players pick the character because they've never believed in blocking a day in their life. You gotta commit. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, but this, but this is this this it's like this is your time. You've trained your whole <laughs> life for this because because in a lot of these spots, blocking is just death anyway. So yeah. it's correct to not even try. So you know you've been training for this moment. That's Danny not quite going the distance that he needed. Okay. That is a really good reversal option for those of you who don't know. Doing FD Dandy into um, into Bunker like that is actually airtight. Like, you will go through needies and bunker them in the face. Oh, that's Dandy not getting all the way through. Oh, I do not like putting yourself in the corner, though. Yeah, now you are in some trouble. This is not going to kill, but he's going to get a bad spot. Oh yeah, man, that's yeah. gonna be it. Too far away, and that's like extra mean because you just know burst is not even an option. So, so one thing I want to talk about real quick that we've seen a couple times, and even in some of the previous matches, and I haven't pointed it out, but I'll point it out now. Uh, when Zappa has the sword, be aware if he does the sword swipe on the ground, that's like the combo ender, basically. Oh, you gotta punish that. You gotta punish that. But uh, that's like the combo ender on the ground, and uh, it's very common. I've talked about this on my stream before during some replay analysis. It's extremely common that they will OTG you after this. I'm not going to go too much into why, but it is extremely, extremely common. And and in fact, Sable has done it every time in that situation. You want to be prepared for that and to tech that OTG. Uh, because if you do not tech that OTG, it leaves you in a very, very bad spot as far as his mix-up potential. So it's, it is extremely important that you tech that OTG. So we'll see if it, uh, if it comes up again. Dog pressure. Okay, got wow, the dog. Did he just intercept the dog? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, the dog 6H, that like lunging move. So right here, OTG. Yeah, he tried. But uh, there, Sable did tech before he hit the ground, so that was good. Dimax. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Dimax. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dimax is using quite a bit of the Slayer Copter in the way in, and I really I don't know if it's an executional error, because that's such a strange option. Oh, the <laughs> death off the DP. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, there. So. The risk versus reward of certain moves gets kind of rebalanced in some spots against Zappa because moves like like uh what is that move actually called? I forget. Um Uh it's a silly name. We used to call we used to just call it skirt. But um because it looks like a skirt. But um Yeah, anyway. Uh Footloose Footloose. Journey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um moves like that where you you don't typically get a good conversion off of them. It's just like a kind of, you know, single hit. Those types of moves actually go up in value in this kind of matchup again because just getting a hit will remove his summon. So, you know, sometimes it is valuable to just go for that one hit even though you're not going to get much off of it. Sure. It's still very valuable. The reward is still very good. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, oh man, look at that delayed pressure. Ooh. Had the right idea, but was just a little bit too far. I secretly hate Footloose because some way that I ma try to mash out of stun, I accidentally get super jump all the way to the top of screen Footloose, and that's the only time I accidentally get the move, <laughs> which is like the, it's negative 500, right? Like yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was the exact thing I was showing before, the far slash and then run up summon. You have to punish that. It, it, this matchup, if you're not punishing summon, and especially that was like point blank, you know, sometimes some characters can struggle to punish it at range, but I mean, there's just no excuse there. Point blank like that right in your face, you, you have to punish that. Like, no excuse is like, that's angry Ryan teacher. Ryan's done teacher. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, it, the matchup will just become impossible. If, if you're letting him get Ooh. away with that, huge opportunity, yeah, good damage. Ooh, oh, yeah, big again, great. close to stun. Close to stun, if he gets one more good hit. Uh oh, yeah. dog in the corner, this is a problem. He was more likely to die first. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that's true. Sandwich now with the dogs, a tough spot. Wow, I'm surprised that didn't combo. Try to go for the mix nice, 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 nice. The 2D was a little precariously spaced, but uh, it looks like Sable tried to hit a button and hit a little too soon. Nothing came out. Oh my god, Just there it is. The the fabled four dashes. <laughs> Wait, was that three or four? I think it was four. I think it was four. It was a lot. Yeah. Uh, Slayer 2D is such a funny button! Yeah, he's gonna be able to get a conversion off that. Look, it's a damage! And that wasn't even, like, the whole thing. So it's funny, the stuff I, we were talking about before with Dimax, you know, that early jump D ender, it keeps coming up here in this matchup also, and you can see he's really just... 
I, I don't even know that it's the, the lack of timing that, that's hurting him, that he's not getting time to set up Oki, but he's just not getting anything off that position ever. He's just getting hit more often than he's hitting the opponent. And as a Slayer player, getting a knockdown, that is not where you need to be. But also so as, a Slayer, I, I, as a Slayer player, Ryan, whiffing mm -hmm. your command grab and then immediately doing FB Dandy Bunker? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dynamax managed but, to get um, on the board. Yeah, I, I think if Dymax just looks at that situation a little bit in training mode and figures out how to how to set up some Oki, I, you know, it's not even that he needs to, uh, you know, do a different knockdown than that immediate jump D, but he should at least have something prepared for when he does do that immediate jump D knockdown. Because um, he's just, he's, he's getting himself hit more often than he's hitting the opponent. Yeah, for sure. And I think that... Uh... Probably, probably just meaty 6k. Probably the easiest. I was literally about to say meaty 6k because it's just such an easy, active ass, like plus thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. And obviously, time. you're a little afraid of Zappa DP, but that's just when you have to make sure that you're on point and punishing it, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, he didn't know TG there. I was about to point it out. I was so Whoa. ready to point it out, and he didn't do it. Dude, he stomped on the sword. <laughs> nice block on the overhead, and he gets rewarded with a hit. Gets the burst out of Sable. Oh, that's a punish? Up. Uh, I like it though. You gotta swing. You get. Oh! Oh. Careful. Okay. Cross frames. Oh, I like that. I like the tight block string off of the It's Late. Just the 2H. Uh, 2K, 2H. Keep, keep the block string tight. Punish. No. Yeah, I, I, but I also, I like the, uh, from Sable, like the delayed DP, because you know it's coming, but him just waiting yeah. a little bit longer made it so much more dangerous. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, no punish. I like the map of there. Oof. Man, trying to fight a character with such fast backwards movement like that is a little awkward. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah, see, so he did that jump D knockdown again, and then he did dandy. I'm trying to pay a little more attention to what he's doing, but he didn't, like, do anything off the dandy. I, I don't know. It looked weird. <laughs> Nice, nice. Wow. Oh, wow. Sword is hey, right get away there. from the sword. Okay. Cross nice. Hits. Nice. All right, what's for Oki? Oh, oh no. Oh, the uncross up. Oh, no, that's going to punish. So oh, it didn't quite kill. Barely. Oh, the, the run up DP. I mean, Sable had beat her. You could have RC'd that, so um, it, it makes sense. If you're going to go out, Ryan, go out bunker and Dimax did a great job this whole damn tournament. I gotta say, they were looking fantastic. Gonna go out here in third place. Definitely something to be proud of. Congratulations on being No, there. definitely. Definitely. And, and you know, Dimax put up a fight, you know, was definitely making the right adjustments. I think the biggest thing, I you know, I, I talked about it all during the match, um, but I think the biggest thing was when, when Dimax was getting those big hits in the corner and getting those jumpy knockdowns, Again, I would like to see a slightly better combo. You don't have to get crazy with the super optimal stuff, but something a little bit better. But even without that, just figuring out how to time some Oki because, you know, the knockdown in the corner not leading to anything is just, um, it's just kind of a feels bad, right? Like your Slayer, you're going to knock down and then you're going to do Oki and they hit you or they jump out or whatever. So figuring out what you can and can't do. And, and it might be the case where because that jumpy knockdown is, is losing some time, from your potential setup, that uh, Dandy maybe is just weaker there. You know, maybe some of the options in Dandy, uh, like Dandy uh, into under pressure, are too slow. I, I don't know. I would think that it's probably still fast enough, but uh, definitely something you got to look at because that 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 to me seemed like the biggest hole in your game plan. I think as you played that matchup, the, the first couple of games it seemed like you got a lot more comfortable with um, you know what you needed to do, and you were playing around the summons much better. You're 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 maneuvering around the sword for the most part was actually very good um uh, i would say it was just your your oki was a little bit weak and uh you gotta punish um summon that was the other huge thing yeah. even if it's just um you know 2k 2h or uh 5k mappa um you, you just have to hit them or just and this 2D. goes back to what we were saying hmm? or just 2d i don't know that 2d is fast enough maybe if you're really close mm -hmm. Um, but in general, I like to recommend things that are going to work from further ranges because it's not as common that he's going to be point blank like that. Usually it's going to be a little more spaced, but I think any range, I think 5k always punishes. Yeah. So, you know, if you're, if you're ever not sure about the range, uh, I would just do 5k Mappa or 5k, uh, force break dandy.
crosswise, you know, something like that. But this goes back to what we were saying before, where the single hit stuff, it's not as important that you optimize your punish. You just have to hit them, even if it's a single button. Like sometimes with Venom, I just do 2S, you know? It, sometimes it's like max, max range, and I don't know if I can sweep, so I just do 2S. But it, you have to do something to at least knock the summon off of him so that he didn't get the summon for free. So yep. very, very crucial. Sable just rebooting their laptop real quick, you know, loading more coal into the furnace to make sure that, like, uh, <laughs> not having any of the connection issues. <laughs> yeah, but but good stuff. Again, I, I haven't really been giving Sable much advice, but, um, you know, we, we, we he, he, they keep winning, so... Um, well, but, this is going to uh, be and also, This is going to be like the yeah. two titans of the bracket. Yeah, exactly. And also, overall, Sable's been playing very well. There's really not too much I can I can talk about. Um, you know, just I like the decision making. I like a lot of the stuff. I talked about that OTG, and it almost makes me wonder if Sable was maybe listening uh, to, to what I was saying, because it seemed like uh, that OTG stopped after I after I mentioned it, which I, I'm cool with that. That's that's great. Um, if you have the presence of mind to do that, uh, I think it I think it's a powerful thing that the OTG after the sword swipe. Um, until they start teching. So that's why I'm just trying to raise awareness so that people know you should tech that. Um, but until the opponent techs it, I think as a Zappa player, you should absolutely do it. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I, I think um, Sable was playing fantastic. Yeah, I mean, whenever someone listens to me on commentary, I go, oh no, don't listen to me. But I mean, this is, <laughs> it's a learned <laughs> tournament because, you know, we all want to avoid the situation where we tell someone to do something on commentary and they immediately try to do it and die for it. And we're just like, Hey, everybody, I got a, I got a turkey in the oven. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, what you call it? Uh, while uh, Sable is taking a little while here to join, just a couple housekeeping things. Yes, we do run this tournament every other week, uh, so the next one will be two weeks from now. Uh, it's actually going to be temporarily our last one, uh, just because Strive is coming out. And obviously, I'm sure almost everybody is going to be super focused on Strive when it first comes out, trying to dissect that game. Uh, and playing that quite a bit. Don't worry, like, give it a month or two. Plus R is gonna be back to the same status it was, I'm sure, as, like, the specialty, like, fun-ass old game, right? I think right now, uh, we're all just kind of, uh, I wanna, A, take a break from Plus R. We've been running it really hard, it feels like, for almost a year. The entire FTC has just been focused on Plus R. Uh, so Shive yeah. is gonna be cool. Uh, you know, we're gonna play Strive and to level with all of you, we're gonna play Strive for like a month and as long as it's not unmitigated Kusoge, uh, we'll probably keep playing it for a little bit, um, but probably still run plus R, just not as frequently. How does that sound? That sound fair? Not a full sounds, year yet for rollback? Sounds reasonable to me, sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, so that's gonna be the plan. So next one is gonna be the last beginner's tournament until Strive comes out. And then obviously, uh, <laughs> I think if anyone tries to run a beginner's tournament for launch Strive, I, I can't think of a good way to do that. Because it's not very easy to determine who's a beginner or not. Because uh, I think a lot of times, even like top players, if anything, they have like accelerated learning, but not accelerated immediate like fundamental level right so everyone's going to be a yeah, beginner exactly we got to wait for the dust to settle a little bit then we might start running some beginner shivey stuff but at first we're probably just going to do some open bracket fun sh uh fun stuff while we're doing it um, yeah exactly and i know i know some people have also already asked me if i'm going to be open to you know doing replay analysis for strive or you know doing something similar to what we're doing now for strive uh just to be upfront with you guys i i am definitely not comfortable doing that um i have to learn the game just like everybody else so i'm not going to be in a position to be, you know, giving advice to people of what they should and shouldn't be doing, or my advice on what they should and shouldn't be doing for for a while. Um, so, you know, this keep in mind I've been playing this game. A, l a lot of the stuff that I recommend to people is legacy knowledge that I've had for 10 to 15 years. So, you know, this is not, um, you know, this is not a couple of months of me playing plus R and being like, oh, I just know all these little intricate things. Like I know, um, I was just showing um, on a replay review. Uh, I did replay reviews on Friday night, and um, it was FL, who I think I just saw in, in chat here. Yeah, I just saw FL uh, in chat. Um, we were reviewing Jam versus Kai, and um, having not thought about this in, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, all of a sudden I instantly remembered, oh yeah, Jam meaty 5K can low, or meaty 5H, can low profile Kai's DP. And then I showed that in trading mode. So, you know, that level of uh, intricate, you know, character knowledge takes a lot of time to, to develop. So, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's like, uh, 
You know, right? I think you make it sound a little more serious than you, when you say, like, I'm not comfortable giving analysis. I'm sure you're going to be giving some people, or, like, everyone's going to be trying to give you some level of advice. I think it's more just, like, yeah. your level of, your standard, right? Of just, like, you want to be yeah, able to exactly. give real, informed, tested, like, advice. Yeah, it's more It's more like when it comes to, you know, like, like some of the stuff I was just talking about, for example, we were talking about, like, Faust versus Zappa, and, like, you know, you should use this button instead of this button because of this. Stuff like that, it sounds very simple, but that stuff takes time to understand. So, you know, when it comes to simple fighting game stuff, sure, you know, I can I can, I can, can do that. That That's pretty straightforward. Once you know the, the system mechanics, you know, that's pretty straightforward. But, you know, even simple stuff like how the buttons interact and the matchups and stuff, it takes experience and, and you know, some time to understand that stuff so yeah and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that future facing stuff in a little bit but first and foremost everybody it we is some gonna... business to attend to we got some business between these two players sable and hyper Heiko. you know ryan on the lowdown i heard hyper Heiko called sable stinky so you know some bad blood Word. between these two players so we're, we'll Word. see what happens <laughs> But make some noise, so everybody. It, winners finals. It's going to be Sable, Zappa versus Hyper Heiko, uh, Potemkin. Hyper Heiko is in winners. Sable is in losers. So who put Sable into losers? Was it Heiko? Let me see. It was Dimax, actually, which is interesting. And also Danger oh. dropping the big sub Aruni. Look at that. Interesting. Interesting. So Sable with some key adjustments then uh, to, for the run back in uh, Losers Finals. Yeah, looking like it. I didn't realize that was a grudge match. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Heiko in a tough spot already against a sword. The tech forward though. Oh wow, and then gets a sword again. Nice block, small punish. There's that OTG. That's the OTG I'm talking about. This feels not very fun for Pot right now. Oh, never mind. That was fun. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that exact thing is exactly what I was just going to say is that Hammerfall does not get you through the sword. The hits are like just fast enough and 5H is a two hitting normal. So Hammerfall just doesn't quite get them through it. Um, so, you know, it, 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 Potemkin is kind of the, the type of character where, you know, Hammerfall can answer a lot of things, but when it can't answer something like that, he's kind of already out of options, you know? Yeah. So it's tough. Yeah, it's just, oh my god, from downtown. So one thing, uh, did did Sable just do it there? It was hard to see because they were on the edge of the screen, but um, <laughs> Slidehead is also very weak in this matchup, uh, is, is another kind of aspect of this matchup, because Zappa's 5k is low in vulnerable, so you can literally just press 5k on reaction to Slidehead and go over it. I think he just so, backdashed like nine times, but I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's equally as likely. <laughs> you know how Zappa players be. Yeah. I mean, this matchup is definitely Battle of the Backdashes. Did he fall on a banana from the top ropes? Yes. <laughs> oh, and he is cursed. Yeah, I mean, this this matchup is tough. So, the, the ghosts look pretty annoying, and, and they are. However, one thing to keep in mind here that I don't think Heiko was going for is they are flickable. So that is a, a huge difference between the zoning aspect of the sword and the zoning aspect of the ghosts. So, and obviously if you can get a flick on the on one of the ghost projectiles, that, that's a big game, right? So, um, you know, something to, to keep in mind going forward in the matchup. That's his first game lost all tourney, Cheat Death says. Isn't it funny how Guilty Gear works sometimes where, I'm not saying this is entirely character to character, right? But like, it really, like, you can just have a matchup that you, like, don't like or you're, you think just is bad for your character, and, like... Yeah, or just unfamiliar. Yeah, and it's just, you just get exploded. We, I yeah. think we saw that in 25v25, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Skeleton Minion was running through all Team Japan and then had to fight one Justice and was like, well, <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> Ooh. Ghost Dog not quite getting in the right spot. Okay, dead angle, trying to get back in there. Big hit. Wow, no. Oh no, missed time the meaty. Okay. And again, those single hits. You know, just the jump D didn't get a combo off it, but that's okay, it knocked the sword off. Yeah, but unfortunately, immediately a dog took its place and Zappo wields his dog with two hands. Yeah, you do not want to be, you know, when, the, when, when you're in neutral and the dog is across the screen from you with Zappa, it's not a big deal. When you're sandwiched, it's a bad time. You're you're in a bad spot. 
Oh, right idea. That could have punished. He just delayed it too much. But Pop Popbuster does punish that. Great. That was so smart from Sable there, getting the knockdown and then immediately just IED yeah. over him to get the screen space. Yep, yep. Yeah, positioning very important against Potemkin in general, but yeah. Jump over. Yeah, same idea. Oh, oh, try for the pop buster. Actually got 5p. Unfortunate. Ooh, the, yeah. wow, the butt whiff. Why does butt recover that fast on whiff, dude? <laughs> he like lands right, on his Heiko. butt and the legs just come straight out of his cheeks. Like, how is he back up? Yeah. Heiko, uh, looking a little better while anti or DP. Oh, nice back dash. Okay, a little bit of a scramble here, but it's working out for Heiko. Everything's, uh, working. Ooh, I wonder if- was that a misinput? He did that on, like, uh, the opposite side. Yeah, I actually think it was not, and I love the idea, because if he was mashing DP there, he would have armored through the DP. Wow. So I, I think he actually intentionally created that gap with the intention of armoring the, the summon and hitting him. Uh, did he run under Hammerfall? Uh, I didn't notice if he did. I was looking at the life, actually, trying to see, because he's got a lot of life to work with. See, see these multiple OTGs? That's what I'm talking about. It's so important that you tech forward to get out of yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this kind of loop. Yeah, okay, Pato's with me. He ran under Hammerfall and punished him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's messed up, but Hyper Heiko finds the round. Yeah, yeah, so that's 1-1, one, one, right? That's 1-1. One, one. Right, I mean, this is what we. This is what everyone wants to see, right? They don't want to see a runaway. They want to see a. They want to see a battle back and forth. Yeah, a hundred percent. They want to see, you know, again, the two titans of the bracket. They've looked great every time they were on stream. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it, it's really funny, Ryan, just to, to zoom out for a second, because I was uh when I was commentating for live and stream, right? Obviously, a lot of the chat was like Smash players, and somebody asked like how many characters are viable in this game, and everybody immediately was just like everybody, like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's really, like everybody's really strong, and it's really fun to see that on display uh, in matchups like this, right? Where both these characters are just so powerful. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I mean, certainly Potemkin is not as strong as he was in vanilla, but he's still a very good character. Man, he's really having a hard time with the P-Toss. So I mentioned that the ghosts are flickable. I'm, I'm actually going to double check after this. The P-Toss may not always be flickable. It may depend on where it's falling on you. Maybe you have to like walk back first or something. I'm not sure. Because the P-Toss is the one that goes... It's like the hidden missile one. But, uh... Okay, nice hammer fall. Ooh, Big hit. Him. Wait, wait! Oh my god, I think he... Oh no! Got him, got him! He is stunned! Wow, I'm, the stun! I wasn't even nice. sure if Heavenly Pot Buster did stun. That's so messed up. <laughs> that was so good. I think that actually he was so far away when the Heavenly started that uh, Sable might have been able to hit a button and just beat him out of it. Like, like um, Rao Jump D hits very far like out and below him. He might have been able to just stuff it with, with Rao Jump D. But um, he should have tried because there's really like no downside to trying. Yeah, there's a DP. By the way, OTG? shout out to Sable yeah. for getting the reversal DP timing consistently. That's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice FRC for the conversion. Oh, oh, too soon, too soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, just simple meaty. Oh. Heiko looking good. No. Oh! I wonder if that actually punched the landing. Yeah, I think it did. Oh no! Oh! Oh! Oh, the jump D. All right, Heiko. Hi. A quick second game here, up to one. How did he get that round? That round seemed like it was signed and sealed. Yeah. Oh shit, Heiko. So we one round away, or one game away, rather. Yeah, tournament game here. Um, we've seen a couple times Heiko get two uh, H and then get slide head. Um, I always forget. I've 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 gone through this same thing uh, during a review where I couldn't remember what is the input for Heavenly. Is that the problem? He's trying to Heavenly and getting Slidehead. Is it because he thinks he has meter and he does not? Is that is that what's going on? I I don't remember the input to be entirely honest. Because it's happened twice already. Ooh, Slidehead gets hit by the P toss. Oh yeah, I think they do overlap. Yeah. Alright, burst. Slidehead gets the knockdown. Oh man, Hammerfall just gets eaten alive sometimes here. Yeah, and he's cursed now. It's a tough spot. So, so actually, talking about the curse, 
The curse can be not that bad because some of the things are flickable also. Like the golf ball is kind of an easy flick if you know what you're looking for. So the golf ball, um, if you notice on the sides of the screen, sometimes there's like right there, that yellow, uh, you know, Japanese text. Um, that's like the equivalent of, you know, like for golf, you yell four before you hit the ball. That's like the Japanese equivalent of whatever, I guess you say in Japanese when you're playing golf. Um, and it's it's warning you that a golf ball is coming. <gasps> so if you know that it's coming, um, you can actually flip the golf ball. Um, and it's it's pretty slow moving if you if you can find it. <laughs> it's just really small, so you have to know that it's coming so you can see it. That's so funny. You literally have to react to the four and then like <laughs> golf yeah. ball swing it. Yeah, exactly. I just thought it looked like Rocco's Modern Life text, and that's all I could think of. Yeah, yeah, it's very like Art Deco, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, this is the all chance right, Heiko go. needs. The chat is uh, cheering on Sable, though. They want to see more games. Uh, blame them. Nice defense by Heiko, though. Hello? Oh, this could be it. Yeah, okay. Nice dead angle, okay. Going. The Judge Gauntlet going through the summon. Not quite enough oh. for the kill, but that's going to do it. All right, potentially last now. round here. Yeah, Heiko just needs one more. Judge Gauntlet seems like it's actually pretty reasonably useful in this matchup just because there's so many multi-hit moves where Zappa, I feel like, doesn't usually have to care about what you're doing. Yeah, I think Sable had the right idea to do summon once uh, they noticed that um, Heiko was doing Judge Gauntlet. I think they just did it too soon. If, if they would have waited until the Judge Gauntlet was trying to hit them, they could have involved through it, you know? Yeah. All right, Oki situation. Oh, wow! Okay, the immediate burst. burst. Nice air throw. That's going to get a summon. Good block. Yeah, the ghosts. Okay, the ghosts are gone. That's huge for Heiko. Yeah. Punish, punish! Oh, you have to punish! That was the round. That was that was the tournament. Oh, wait, tournament Oki! No! He oh, didn't have enough for Again, speed. didn't have meter for Heavenly. He thought he the was gone. Goes through the hammerfall. Oh, this, he's got a lot of meter. Oh! Golf ball? Golf ball again? Golf ball again? Dude, it is Arnold Palmer season out here! Oh. Row! Row! Oh my oh. god, those dangerous DPs! Oh. Slidehead! Oh my. What's it gonna OG? be? Ah! Oh, the DP hit the back dash! On the low 2H! Sable holds it together, bringing it to game five! Unbelievable! Holy Heiko, smokes. Heiko had multiple opportunities, went for the Heavenly without the meter, didn't quite build enough meter for it, and then got that slide head. I think they could have uh, super jumped forward and OTG'd for the kill. Yeah, so in a lot of spots when you get slide head, sometimes you can be out of range, but most of the time you can just get a 2D OTG uh, after you move forward a little bit. So maybe a couple of missed opportunities for, for Heiko. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's like, uh, he must have, if Heavenly Popbuster cost 50 meter, he must have been at 49. Like, I don't yeah, blame 49. him for misjudging that at yeah. all. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's Whoa. a great hammer fall. So that the sword rush has a follow-up. It's kind of like a frame trap. Um, it's, it's almost like a Rekka, really. Um, but hammer fall just blows it up because, you know, it's, it's a single hit. Oh, and the curse begins here. Okay. Oh, the golf, golf ball! ball still wow! Comboed into the super! That was Are wonderful! Are you kidding me? The awareness! Are you kidding me? Oh, the Judge Gauntlet. Oh, almost had it. Far Slash 2S might have worked there. Dude, Tries to kill the dog, but misses. <laughs> trying so hard okay. to kill this dog! Oh, missed the air throw. Oh, the overhead? Sable has Rao! Wait, did you go through? Oki situation! Yeah. Oh, with the wake up DP. You have to expect it, Ryan. You gotta expect yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, really. Alright, Sable on reset point now. Oh, miss the Mega Fist. Or miss the Podbuster. Oh, the curse begins again. Ghosts have just been such a problem for Heiko. Banana peel out. Oh, and the flower pot immediately anti aired him. Jeez. I feel like the, the way that the curses have been shaping out have just been smoking Heiko. Yeah. Okay! Blocked, okay, situation! He missed oh, that, that was about to be a pot buster. You can see the little shimmy. The little, you know, doing the input. Yeah. Oh, Judge Gauntlet, nothing! Wow, the dog avoided that slide head? That dog's got moves. Yeah. Oh, a little what? light on the summon didn't combo off the air throw. What do you mean anti-air 5D? Oh, big opportunity here. 
Oh, no resources. Whoa, he punched the dog! Ryan, oh. he punched the dog! Uh, Stable trying to just get away. Dead angle, no good. Pico. Oh, 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 the meaty 5k. Overhead! I knew it! I knew yeah. it! I blocked that as the commentator last round! <laughs> Alright, final round here. Set one. Either the tournament's ending or we're going to a second set. Wake up summon. Ghosts again. Not cursed yet, though. Oh, no ghosts? <gasps> no ghosts available. They're, they were coming back still. He blew through the dog with the hammerfall. Sable now getting pop buster stuck in the corner. The tournament can end right now. Oh, missed the follow up. Maybe too far from the corner. <gasps> oh, the 5H goes through. Sable definitely tried to throw. Got 5H, but it worked out. Still alive. He was still they in. through each other. Nice ant here with the dog. Oh. Burst. I like that burst. I like that burst a lot. Yeah, Hyper Hyco does Summon. not have a burst. Oh, and the ghost just run away. Why are you going in? Get out of there. Sable almost has full meter. What do you mean 5D? What is that oh. supposed to be? All right. Super oh, hammer! And the hammerfall, oh. the tournament winner. Hammerfall clutches it out. Great stuff to both players. Heiko coming through with the clutch hammerfall, though. Oh my god. That was an insane... That might be... I'm not gonna lie. Might be one of my favorite grand finals we've seen. That was some wild stuff. And Heiko is gonna take it. But Sable, second place. You can see the chat. You know, they're all holding their heads. I know Sable's a fan favorite, but give Heiko the props. That was definitely fantastic. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a great set. Um... Awesome. I think right at the end, I think maybe maybe uh, a strategy failure by, by Sable had the good positioning in the corner. Uh, they got Ghost, and I, I was screaming, you know, back up, run away, just zone with the Ghost, you know, don't don't risk being near him. And then they, they backed up after, after the pressure ended, but then they did Super, and the Super uh, unsummons your summon. Mm -hmm. So then put themselves, you know, in a spot where they didn't have, um, you know, as much leverage because yeah. they, they weakened themselves, you know? So, and I think um, we saw I, just, obviously the super was blocked. That match in general was just like the photo perfect example of like Zappa with summon versus Zappa without summon, just in terms of like how much differently that neutral plays out, right? Like it was, it's, it was so, that was such an important moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, I, I want to just show one quick thing here. Well, and not even show, I want to, um, test. Hyper Heiko um, is screaming in the chat, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if you can flick this. Uh, I have to remember how to be flick. 236P? Is it not? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I thought it was F. Oh, it's, it's half circle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Can you flick this? You can. I thought so. I thought so. This one thing... I mean, he Heiko wound up winning anyway, obviously, but I think this would have completely turned the matchup upside down because we talked so much about how much uh, trouble the ghosts were giving Heiko. And, I mean, this just... Look at this. I mean... This turns the ghosts from a from a zoning nightmare into almost a, a, an irrelevant. You know, you're almost happy when Zappa gets ghosts uh, when you can do something like this. You know, and then even when get cursed if you can flick the golf balls too. But you know, this this just makes you know in, in some matchups it can be it can be hard because they can vary the the angle or the timing of their projectile or fake projectile or things like that. But in this case with the ghosts. This is just simple reaction. Once you see where the ghost is going, uh, it's going there, and you have plenty of time to react. You know, so th none of the ghost tosses are especially fast. So you know, um, not that one. Uh, I want S. So you know, this one is also just incredibly easy to flick on reaction. Um, of course, I fail it the first time, but um, you know, you should be able to flick these basically every time. So. Heiko saying they tried to do it later and slipped with a banana peel. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> if you're cursed already, you got to be careful of the curse items messing up your flick. Um, that's definitely a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, and the other thing I wanted to show also from, from the other side uh, that I talked about a little bit is um, this. So we saw Sable um, using backdash to avoid slide head. But 5K, as you can see here, um, is just low and full. So, and you can do it like incredibly late. Um, it's like, I, I want to say it's invuln like very, very quickly, uh, low invuln. So um, it's just a really good way. It's a very low, low committal way to avoid slide head um, because, you know, there are some things like sometimes the Pemkins will do this or, or this to fake um, slide head because they kind of look similar. 
So, you know, they'll do something like this and then do a slide head. So, but when you do, um, when you do zap up 5k, it just recovers so fast that even if you get faked out, you're totally fine. Um, and, and if you, if you do avoid slide head, once you see that it was a slide head, you could just summon, you get a summon for free and there's really not much you can do about it. So, um, but yeah, really awesome stuff from, from both sides. Really not too much. Um, I can, I can say, um, for, for Heiko in, in your earlier match, I mentioned, I would just love to see a little more hammerfall in your pressure. Um, it seems like maybe you don't have the muscle memory of holding a charge while you're pressuring. And I think that would really add a nice, uh, you know, depth to your, to your pressure. It's a pretty core, uh, aspect of Potemkin's pressure in this game. And, um, but other than, other than that, honestly, that's like really the one major thing that stood out to me. Everything else was great. Oh, the other thing that I talked about, um, so just, just to look at this real quick. So I, I don't know exactly what the max range is, but I believe you can, uh, from, from pretty far, you can get an OTG. Um, I don't know if you, is, is it super jump you can do? Um, I think it is. Um, I think you just have to do it like very quickly. But in these like round ending situations, um, you want to be familiar with, with how to get an OTG. Um, because you, you, you had it one. I'm pretty sure you could have gotten an OTG. Yeah, see, like that. Mm. So as long as you're in range of super jump and sweep, uh, you can potentially close out a round with, a, with an OTG. Um, so definitely something to practice because it, it does come up and it came up in your match um, where I think you just had it one and you, you didn't OTG. So. Sure. But, um, but yeah. Awesome, awesome stuff. That was a great grand finals. Yeah, that was a fantastic tournament overall. Ryan, you and I got some housekeeping that we got to talk about, uh, quite mm -hmm. literally in your case. So do you want to talk a little bit um, about uh, what you call it? So two weeks from now, there's another beginning tournament, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't believe I'm going to be able to to uh, commentate on the next one. Uh, I've got some family stuff going on that I'm going to have to help with that week. Um, my, my dad is moving, uh, I've got to help him move, uh, and it's going to be, he's like moving out and then moving into his new place a week later, so there's going to be a lot of chaos that week. Uh, and not to mention Strive is coming out also, I'm probably not really going to get to play much that week, honestly. But, um, yeah, so unfortunately I, I don't think I can commit to, uh, to commentating the next one, um, which is very unfortunate because it, it is going to be the last one, like Bone said, for the, for the little foreseeable future until we kind of shake out you know what uh you know what uh trinity and bones want to do with basically the, whether or not we like as, strive <laughs> yeah with what they want to do as far as strive is concerned so um obviously we're just gonna have to play it by ear um but um yeah it's been a pleasure doing these i, I hope everybody learned a lot um I, I usually always plug um the replay reviews also that i do but i intentionally did not tonight um, I have been doing them in the past, but I'm also kind of winding those down. I'm really backlogged right now, so I actually turned off the submissions. Um, if you were in this tournament and you would like to submit, keep an eye on my Twitter. I'm trying to get through the backlog in my next couple of streams so that I can open it back up for some last, you know, a last round of submissions before, um, you know, basically before two weeks, before uh, I get really busy with family stuff and before Strive comes out. Because again, like Bone said, once Strive comes out, Myself, like I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be more focused on Strive and uh, taking a break from this game. So I definitely by no means plan to quit this game. I totally intend to continue playing it and streaming it. But, uh, you know, obviously new game. Everyone's excited about Strive. Going to be focusing on that for, for a little while. So, yeah. And, uh, uh, so, yeah, that's that's the situation. Let me just say and be gushy for a second, Ryan. I cannot thank you enough for joining me on these beginner streams that we've been doing. It has been an absolute pleasure. Um, I saw that Nettle just was in three big dudes uh, for Ryan for joining us here. <laughs> Everyone, do me a favor. I'm going to do those dudes at Ryan right now before he leaves. And I also want all of you to at Ryan Hunter and say thanks. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> Let's say thanks, Mr. Ryan Man. How about that? That's not appropriate. So, all right. Everybody, three, two, one. Let's all thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Do, do, do. <laughs> thanks so much, Ryan. It's um, so funny because I can't see you. I guess I could see you if I <laughs> wanted to. Oh no, I can't. I'd have oh, to I, I'm screen, not, yeah, I'm not doing that. I think I'm yeah, yeah. But I just hear the sound. It's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was my pleasure, guys. Um, obviously, you know the the reason that I did this was just because I felt like I could reach a wider audience and and you know try to help. Is it's it's like a it's like a shotgun doing this. You know, I get to help a, a ton of people all at once, as opposed to you know the the replay reviews that I do, which is very focused. You know, it's it's a little more one on one. Uh, granted, a lot of people do get, you know, some, some education out of those, you know, kind of peripheral, but, um, you know, it's just a, a different way that I can help a, a lot more people. So, um, it was my pleasure. This was fantastic. And, uh, you know, 
this is uh, goodbye for now and a, a little bit of a you know a, a reprieve. But um, you know, I, I don't think it'll be the last that we'll be doing stuff like this. So I'm sure I'll drag you out of your tomb at some point here, Ryan, and get back into some guilty <laughs> your action at some point. But for now, um, I'll, let me kick you off. I got some more housekeepy stuff just around the next tournament and stuff I want to go through, and then we'll play our outro and get out of here. Okay. But thanks again, Ryan. Sounds it's good. been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Adios, friend. Boom. All right, just me. How's it going, everybody? So. Couple of housekeeping things. Trin, do you have the bracket ready yet? Because if so, uh, be ready to post it on my word. Um, but whatchamacallit, we are doing another beginner tournament in two weeks. I'm trying to find a, whatchamacallit, a special guest commentator for that week. Um, so it should be just as exciting. I'm trying to find somebody else to chop in here. You know, absolute worst case scenario. If it's uh, just me and uh, Snow Monkey or something like that, I'm sure we'll still have a great time. Seeing if we can do a little bit more of a big send-off. We'll figure that out. Um, we're going to be temporarily taking plus R off the menu when Strive comes out. Uh, just to run some, you know, public, like, just everyone get in here, play some Strive, uh, like, weekly, like, alternating. Um, we're not going to be doing beginner stuff at first, because that doesn't make any sense for a game that's just coming out. Uh, and I think that's it. It sounded more complicated in my head than it did in reality. Does that all make sense to everybody? Anybody have any questionaries on that while I find the uh, bracket? That sounds sensible? All right, great. Glad to hear. Uh, cool. What were we talking about? Shut up, Sigwin. Okay. Um, this is the bracket for the last beginner's tournament. So if you have entered them before, I'm going to ask you take a quick break. Uh, take, like, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, don't enter this one. Let's try to get everybody who's interested in uh, Plus R at the last little bit here to be able to join. Just a personal request for me i'm not gonna like hold people accountable for that really but that's what i'm gonna ask oh yes we're only running pc for strive that was a big thing i was gonna say i recognize that's probably gonna be a bummer for some of you um and i'm super sorry if that's the case but ultimately keep in mind i have my pc right and i'm getting strive on it uh and that and uh, the a lot of like the consistent weeb cup like guilty gear players use pc so, as much as I love all of you, and I wish we could do anything, and I wish crossplay existed, uh, logistically, it makes sense for us to run PC for what we're doing, okay? Um, what should we call it? Okay. I think that's it. Question mark. Trinity, why are you saying fuck? What'd you do? That makes me nervous. Y'all never gonna run PC with PS4 Strive? Unfortunately, not in the foreseeable future, CloudX each you go, but let me say, real quick, that there is gonna be no shortage of Strive tournaments, right? Like, you can all imagine. It's gonna be like every day. There's gonna be the Monday mashing. There's gonna be the Tuesday trashing. There's gonna be the Wednesday washing. It's gonna be every day. So like, and for every console. So I'm sorry if you can't specifically play in ours. I hope you can still hang out and watch. Uh, but again, for the future, uh, we're just gonna be doing PC, okay? All right, um, that all being said, I think that's everything I wanted to get through. Uh... Boom. Yeah, it's like washing, but with a real heavy Midwestern accent. Um, yeah, the Thursday thrashing. Exactly. Someone wants to run a PS4, PS5 Discord. Uh, we'll talk about that, Cody. I think that's going to be a bit... We'll talk about it, okay? I don't want to immediately just be like, yeah, whatever, because like... <laughs> I always kind of want to make sure I think that things that are being done in the Hoop Squad is kind of at like a, a level, right? So, okay. All that being said, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play our outro here. It's going to be our usual one. We're going back to it. We played some different ones for a while. We were experimenting, but, you know, we're getting close to the end here of these weave caps, and I'm getting nostalgic. So, we're going to play our regular outro. As a reminder, the way this works is while it's going, when you see the character that you identify with the most, you're going to say that character is me or me or something similar in the chat, okay? All right, everybody ready?
All right, thank you so much, everybody, for watching and playing. No, we don't want to watch a Brian F video right now. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching and playing. I'm going to shoot y'all over to Elven Shadow, who's streaming his Wednesday night fights run right now. He's the guy who organizes 25v25. Uh, so give Elven Shadow some love. Say hi to him for me. And I'll talk to y'all. Street Fighter 5 tomorrow, and I'll talk to y'all later, okay? Peace!